Today's podcast is brought to you by Visa. With the capacity to process over 65,000 transaction messages every second, Visa has been bringing innovations to the way we pay for over 60 years. Imagine a world where instead of just tapping to pay with your Visa, you had to wait for everyone in front of you to cut a check everywhere you went. Imagine how much fun it'd be trying to track down your cousin in Milwaukee for league dues. That's why Visa's vision is to be the best way to pay and be paid everywhere so you won't have to. Whatever your goals are, Visa makes paying fast and easy. The only thing left to figure out is where would you like to be? Visa, everywhere you want to be. Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. EGIF, everybody. Welcome to Undisputed Live from Los Angeles. I'm Jen Hale here with Skip Bayless, or Drip Bayless, really, this morning. And, I'm of dripping. course, yeah, okay. Shannon yeah. Sharp. Good morning, What? Gentlemen. Hey, wait a second. You, you have gone total <laughs> Bel Air. You, know. you, you are the new fresh <laughs> prince of Bel Air, right? I, I started wearing my slippers out here did this you? morning. Okay. I did. Skip, you know your record. You know what your record is since you started wearing that drip. Really? Yeah, you open. You think it's, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. reason? Yeah, pretty soon you're going to have to pass that thing on to me. Oh. Well, if something happens on Sunday night that's not very good, then maybe I'd have to just give this away. Ernestine <laughs> wants to keep it, so maybe I'll just let her wear it from here on. <laughs> Good, good to shake uh, I'm hoping, well, Ernestine, you have it next week. By next week, Ernestine will be wearing it. A uh, little new mojo. All right. A jam-packed show today. Speaking of Sunday night, will the Cowboys beat the Eagles and snag first place in the division? And is Tom Brady being disrespected in the latest quarterback rankings? No. Uh, first, though, we need to start with reigning MVP Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs from last night. Man, the Chiefs bounced back from last week's defeat with a statement 30-6 to victory. But that W carried quite a hefty price tag. Mahomes dislocating his right kneecap on a quarterback sneak in the second quarter. The reigning MVP would would thankfully end up walking into the locker room under his own power, but he did not return to the game. Teammate Travis Kelsey said Mahomes' knee, quote, didn't even look like a knee. It was all out of whack. Mm. After the game, Mahomes tweeted, awesome team win. Love my brothers. Thank you for all the prayers. Everything looking good so far. He also gave the post-game locker room speech. According to reports, Mahomes expected to miss at least three weeks. Shannon, is Andy Reid to blame for calling this QB sneak? Yes, and I tweeted immediately, Skip. I said this is a dumb coaching move. Your quarterback has been injured, nursing an uh, ankle injury since week one. He hurt it in Jacksonville, and it hadn't gotten any better because, Skip, it's hard to, like, when you get an injury, it's hard to heal the injury when you have to practice on Wednesday and then you play again on Sunday. And if you remember, Skip, he got it stepped on several times against Colts that Sunday night game. So that injury has really never healed from week one. He got it stepped on again, I think it was week four. Uh, two belongs back. Yeah, yeah, week four. And so here we are again. No, 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 Skip. You can't do that. See, I understand. Football is a, an inherently dangerous game. And there's a risk every time you step on the field. But there's also something called an unnecessary risk. Skip, he has an injured ankle. Why would you put him in harm's way by asking him to run the quarterback sneak? And I know everybody's saying, well, Shannon, but he didn't hurt his ankle. Well, let me tell you something. I've had ankle injuries. And when I had my first ankle injury in 1993, guess what I had to have off-season surgery on, Skip? My right knee. You know why? Because all I did was compensate. Because I didn't want to put pressure on that left ankle, I ended up compensating so much, I hurt the right knee. You don't put him in harm's way. I'll give you a perfect example, Skip. Peyton Manning. Once he hurt his neck, guess what they never did again? They never ran a quarterback sneak on 31, fourth and one. You have running backs. Skip, I can see, Skip, if it's the AFC Championship game, if it's the Super Bowl, or if it's to get your team to win a game, Skip, I got no mm. problem with that. Skip, this is the seventh game of the season. Mm. Everything that you hope to accomplish is riding on the right arm of that guy. If you think you can go anywhere, I don't care if you got Sammy Watkins, Tyreek Hill, or whatever else you got. Everything that you want, that you hope to accomplish is based on 15 and his health. Mm. They say three weeks. Hopefully, that's the minimum. But, Skip, you can't put this kid in harm's way. Andy, you're smarter than that. It, that's Denver. If you can't beat Denver, 
and you saw the way the game was going, Skip. They went down and scored. Denver got out the box early. You follow them up. You get a lead. They don't do anything. You take a, uh, um, you kick the field goal. Now you're up 10-6. You get the ball back, and you're driving again. Skip, why? You don't, need, you don't, you don't put the kid at risk in a, a, a game of this match. It means nothing. Hmm. You're going to win this game. I totally disagree with the call. I don't know why you would put him in harm's way in a, a regular season game. It's an unnecessary risk hmm. that you didn't need to take. Yes, I understand that there are risks involved in football, but unnecessary risk is what you try to avoid. So I place this at the head coach. Well, if Andy called a play or if Eric Bieniemy, an offensive coordinator. I, Andy called the play. Okay. Well, I fought Andy. Okay. So just for the record, you did pick Denver to win this I game. I, I picked Denver to win. Mark Schlereth picked Denver. So everybody on Undisputed picked Denver. I think Jenny actually picked Mahomes. You picked, you picked, you whatever. You but but w- w- the three of us said Fred. Denver, Denver, Denver. Right. So Patrick Mahomes and company had just lost two straight home games. Mm-hmm. I think there was a level of desperation in a big division game on Thursday night football. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it was just Denver. It looked like just Denver last night because right. that was all-time embarrassment yeah, skip, for man. your old franchise at home on that stage. That was hard for me to watch. Okay, now back to your premise. I can't tell you how much I disagree with your premise, and here's why. I started covering this game of pro football back in the mid-'70s when I covered Don Shula's Dolphins for the Miami Herald. Mm-hmm. Then it was Chuck Knox's Rams, and then it was the Cowboys of Tom Landry and Jimmy Johnson, and then I got to know Bill Walsh very well when he was the advisor-in-chief for the 49ers. Mm-hmm. So I've been around a lot of pro football, a lot of great minds. I cannot remember ever any quarterback ever getting hurt on a quarterback sneak in my time. I Googled it and found that Tom Savage, who's no longer in football, in one of his few starts for the Houston Texans, did suffer a concussion on a quarterback sneak. And so I looked at the play, and it opened up so quickly that he was shocked that there was actually a big hole there. So he just kept going with his head up and just then hit helmets with the linebacker head on who had a little full out of steam. Yes. So I get that one. Right. Freakish. Now to this play. Who is the greatest quarterback sneaker of all time? This, Tom, this isn't even close. Tom Brady. I, I tweet that all the time. Greatest quarterback sneaker ever. Tom Brady has run the quarterback sneak. At, it's hard to count them, but it, it, it's, it's over 200 times mm-hmm. in his career. Tom Brady has willfully, willingly run the quarterback sneak that he loves so much. It's his pet play, his favorite play. And just a week ago on this same Fox stage, the big Thursday night stage, would you believe Tom Brady ran five quarterback sneaks that night? Five. And guess what? He scored twice on quarterback sneaks. Just for the record, could we see these quarterback sneaks? Tom Brady just, there he is. He's just crashing headlong into the pile. So after that game, Julian Edelman called Tom Brady the goat of quarterback sneaks. He's the goat of goats. We know that. But that's how much he loves that play and how successful he's often been on that play. So this is the quarterback that you say protects himself like no other quarterback has ever protected himself in the history of football. Am I right? Yeah, but Skip, okay. is, Skip is different, Okay, though. it's not. Let me finish. So this is the guy who gets rid of the ball quicker than anybody's ever gotten rid of the ball to protect himself. He's 42 years old, and he ran five quarterback sneaks in this same game one week ago on Thursday Night Football. And he, he's so overprotected by the referees, as you say. They even created the Tom Brady rule after what happened to him, Bernard Pollard, mm-hmm. early, first game 2008. Correct. Pollard fell into his legs as they were planted after he, as he got rid of the football, and they said, you can't do that anymore. Right. So he's completely protected. And the last thing in the world Tom Brady wants to do is put himself in any harm's way because he's already on record as saying, I want to play until I'm 45, but I'm still sneaking like mad. I'm, I'm going to sneak because I, I know how to quarterback sneak. I pick the hole. I I know it because we have studied the tape and we know where the vulnerability is in the defense. And I duck quickly 
and I leg drive forward and I burrow under the pile. Well, a lot of big bodies are going to fall on top of you, but they're not going very fast, right? Right. They're just going to fall on top of yes. you. But apparently Tom Brady believes that's not a very risky play because I, I think he thinks okay. there's no risk yeah, in the play. You, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady has a partially separated left shoulder. Okay. They're running quarterback sneak. Okay, he doesn't have a partially... That's okay. my point! Neither he was does, injured! Neither does Patrick He Bob. was injured! He's got an ankle injury. Are you kidding me? Skip, stop come it. on, Skip, stop, stop it. it. Skip, Tom, stop it. Wait please. a second. Hold on just a second. I got you. Tom Brady had a calf injury that oh was so bad. Well, he did. He was not practicing. What did we say? Why did they go get Cody Kessler? Tom, uh, what would the Hall of Famer tell me? They, they got to throw footballs in practice, and Tom Brady can't throw any footballs, no, no, right? No, 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 so he is still quarterback sneaking with a calf injury that was so bad, they had to sign a third quarterback. Skip, they signed the, I'm sorry. Skip, they signed a the third quarterback because they didn't want the backup taking all the reps with the regulars and all the backup okay. reps. Stop it. Skip. There's no danger here. And just because you have an ankle, a little ankle injury, Skip. stop it. Skip, everything okay. is little if you don't have it. Okay, but if you're running full speed, if he's scrambling down the field, you might be able to sell overcompensation to me. You might. Skip. Where left ankle leads to right knee. But do you, do you know what the odds are on a dislocated knee on a quarterback sneak? Billions to one. Because Skip. you know what? It's never happened in the history of football. But Skip, the if point you can find a dislocated knee on any quarterback sneak dating to high school football at the skip. turn of the century, you got me. But skip, that's not the point. You, make, you put the guy in a situation that he took an unnecessary risk. There's My no risk. Okay, if you take off running, I got you. So let me ask you a question. If there's no risk, why don't people play with ACLs, torn ACLs? There's no risk. You can't tear it anymore. It's already okay. torn. Okay, but you can't move. Why you can't? You can't operate. John Elway plays play okay. his whole career without one. Okay, well, okay, so what? I don't even know what your point is. My point okay, is, so skip. quarterback sneak with a torn ACL. It's That's, fine with me. Because so I, I think it's zero so, risk. So why didn't Tom Brady play without a, with, with, when he tore his ACL? My point is, you trying to say there's no risk. There is a risk when you play with an injury and you try to avoid unnecessary risk. Okay. Skip, stop. See, the problem that I have with you is that you want to compare everything to Tom Brady. Tom Brady is not injured. If Tom Brady was injured, if Tom Brady had an injured okay. shoulder, they're not running quarterback sneak. Through, throughout September into early October, he could not practice because of a calf injury, widely reported in New England. So w w help me out, calf or ankle, which is worse? I'll go calf every time, because if your calf goes out completely, you cannot play pro football. Oh, you, but, you can yeah. with, but you can with a bum ankle. Yes. Okay. okay, well, he was moving around just fine last night. I saw yep. him. He was yep. just fine. Skip, he was suck. stepping into his throat. In suck. fact, he went 10 out of 11. Skip. He had completed 10 out of Skip. 11. Skip, everything was short. It's wrapped. It's, it's the fr most freakish injury I have ever seen because it looks like to me that Derek Wolf, who's sort of the left defensive end, if you look at the defense, he sort of falls sideways against his leg as he's falling down. I still don't know how that dislocates a knee. It's as freakish an injury as I've ever seen on a football field. It's virtually impossible, but apparently it did happen because we saw the doctor have to sort of pop it back into place. My so I, how can you condemn Andy Reid for calling a play that is Tom Brady's pet play yep, at age 42? Yep, yep, see, there you go again. Just because it's Tom Brady's pet play. Okay. Why, why would Tom Brady still, why would he sneak five times at age 42 against the New Skip, York Giants? Skip. What Tom Brady does and what Patrick Mahomes does, that has no bearing Is on Is Tom this. Brady superhuman? No. Skip. Do, do you not say that he's the most overprotected quarterback in the history of football? I believe all quarterbacks are overprotected, and they set the rules up, and that's why you see the guys wanting to play so much longer. But, Skip, Tom Brady does not have an injury. Well, he did. Again, does Patrick Mahomes have a bad injury? No. Skip, the guy had, Skip, you saw the man hurt. He left the game in Jacksonville. You see him step up. They stepped on his ankle in Indy. You saw him hobbling. Okay. He's been so hobbling do you, since. Do you truly believe that the ankle injury led to the dislocated knee on a quarterback's knee? Skip, I believe. I don't. Skip, that's not what I'm, I believe that Andy Reid put Patrick Mahomes mm -hmm. at risk. He made him take an unnecessary risk. Skip, okay. there's risk when you step on the football okay, field. I got but it. But that was an so, unnecessary okay, so risk. One last point on Tom Brady. 
Why would he take a quote unquote unnecessary risk five times? Why would he do it more than any quarterback has ever done? No one's ever sneaked as many times as Tom Brady has. So why would he do it when obviously if you have Sony Michelle behind you or let's say Brandon Bolden behind you, why wouldn't you just hand it off to them and let them get the half yard or the one yard for the touchdown? Why does he do that? Because there's also risk in the exchange because sometimes on a quick hitter at the goal line because it's bam, bam, that you turn quickly and because the back is hitting the hole so hard that he doesn't quite get the exchange. He doesn't get the handle on the football and every once in a while you see it go loose into the pile and, and the other team and recovers. You, and you've also so, seen quarterbacks try to get the ball and they fumble on the quarterback's knee. Okay, but, but that's only because sometimes they try to do the over the top, which Tom Brady never tries to go over the top with the football because there's a lot more danger well, in going well, over the top. He'll do that on the goal line because once it breaks the plane, yeah. it's a dead play okay, after but that. But if he but knows he he's but, got it. Yeah, he doesn't do that in the play of field. Okay. The mistake that some makes in the play of field is that they try to go over the top. It's not a dead play then. So, it's, it is in the goal line area. So you are admitting that Tom Brady actually takes on a lot of risk as a real live football player by running quarterback sneaks. Because you say he's, he plays a game nobody else is playing where he's untouched. Skip. So he's actually welcoming Skip. the contact. Skip. He's risking Skip. a knee dislocation Skip. at Skip. the goal Skip. line. Stop. Stop. Will you no? stop? But Skip, you're being, I mean, you're being, no, Skip, I'm, you're I'm being just, so disingenuous. Okay. No, I'm, Tom Brady no, I'm is not. not. I'm you, actually being just as thing. honest as I can you be. You brace everything on Tom Brady. Tom Brady is all time. He's historically, he's transcendently great. Yep. But the way they run their offense and the way Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs run their offense okay. is different. Okay, but Patrick the sneak Mahomes is the sneak. Is it not, do the Chiefs run the sneak differently than the Patriots do? Because yep. I don't see that at yep. all. It looks pretty cut and dry Tom to me. Brady isn't injured. Mm -hmm. Patrick Mahomes was injured. Andy Reid put him at an un... Skip, mm -hmm. if he gets sacked, and he dislocates his knee. Mm -hmm. That's the risk that a quarterback's taking a drop back. Mm -hmm. But he put him at an unnecessary risk because he didn't have to do that. He could have handed the ball to Shady McCoy. Mm -hmm. He could have handed the ball to one of the Williams boys. Mm -hmm. That's what could have happened. He could have handed it to the fullback because they did it twice last night. Okay. There's, to me, far more risk of simply playing oh, Patrick Mahomes, simply sending him out there. That's risky to me. Oh if God. you say he's so hurt that he shouldn't be in the game because he's risking a knee dislocation on overcompensation, why would you even start him Skip. last night you against the Denver Skip. that you say Skip. they should have beat? Skip. You covered the game far too long mm -hmm. to do this. You covered mm -hmm. the game. You've seen the guys go out there, but you don't put the guy at an unnecessary risk. There's if you if you want to disagree and say okay. Tom, but you make everything about Tom. Okay. Tom isn't well, he's, injured. He just simply the greatest to ever do oh, it, okay. and he's still doing it at 42. Okay. But if Tom Brady has a partially separated shoulder, mm -hmm. if there's something, if he has a banged up shoulder, mm -hmm. do you believe Tom Brady would run the quarterback sneak? If, yes or if, no? If Tom Brady had an ankle injury, or I, some, then he's he would run all kinds of quarterback sneaks. There's no jeopardy there. Okay. I, oh, okay. I disagree. I'm, I, I just played on bum ankles, and I know what happens, and I know okay. how hard it all is. Right. Okay. So, so here's the point. Now we get to the bigger picture. So how bad could this be? Because all I do know, if I look back into history, Teddy Bridgewater at the end of a practice on August 30th of 2016 for the Vikings mm -hmm. had a dislocated knee. And guess what else was going on inside that knee? It also tore the ACL and it did all kinds of structural damage yeah, to the knee. Right. And Teddy Bridgewater's career was threatened by what started with what they call patella dislocation. Right. So it's the kneecap is it pops out but of he place. Might, he might, but didn't he mess with some arteries also? And I, I'm saying the head. It, yeah. it was all torn yes, up. Yes. And, yes. and it was a non-contact injury. Right. So I didn't see it because there's no video right. of it that right. I know of. So he's just, it's just moving like he went back to plant steps and it, and it just goes yeah. and everything goes because if the kneecap does dislocate it can take other things with it oh yeah so now we don't know what what went with it we just know that he started limping off the field with help and then he started to walk right. but after the game when we saw him in the locker room he was, he was limpy. limpy he was a little limpy oh, yeah. and he had a black sleeve well, over his knee but here's the, because here's the thing though skip for the knee to dislocate obviously mm -hmm. something had to give because everything is structurally sound, and for that kneecap to mm -hmm. say, okay, I need to go, I'm going this way or that yep. way, yep. something had to give. Remember Robert Edwards, he almost lost his career he on the did. beach, 
and Napoleon McCallum did the same thing. Yep. He lost his career. He never he played another down. Okay. Same thing, patella tendonitis, dislocation okay. of the kneecap and everything, and it was over. Okay. Hopefully, it's, it, it doesn't seem to be that that extent. They'll get the MRI. They're seeing a minimum of three weeks. It's going to be very, very interesting. My only point is, look, I understand football is a dangerous game. And when you step on the field, there's a risk that's involved, Skip. There is a risk, mm -hmm. but you try to avoid the unnecessary risk. Mm -hmm. And I just believe that Andy Reid put him in an unnecessary risk situation okay. by running the quarterback. All right, and I disagree. But now the damage is done, whatever the damage is. Yeah. So both ESPN and NFL.com are reporting three weeks-ish, sort right. of, like it's going to be at least that much, right. if not more, depending right. on what we find out. Right. So – Three weeks, you pick this team to win the Super Bowl. What would you do now? What, what would you stick with, Matt Moore? The, I don't think. I don't think. Skip. The quarterback position is like unlike any mm -hmm. other. You can go get a receiver off the street. You can go get a lineman yeah. or a running back. Running back, toss it to him, run to the open area. A quarterback, you need somebody that's been in your system and here understands your terminology. Yeah. I don't think you can go get a guy off the street and run an offense. I really don't. And have success. Yeah, you yeah. get to do it, you know, run practice. But in a game, yeah. you're stuck with what you have. Matt Moore is going to have to ride, have to drive this car until Pat Mahomes is back. Yep, I agree with that. And I do respect Matt Moore as a quality backup, a Brian Hoyer type of mm -hmm. backup. He won't choke. He will play with whatever poise he can play with because he's he's 15 and 15 as a starting right. quarterback. Not great, right. but not bad. Right. That one year he quarterbacked the last three games in place of Tannehill in Miami, and they did go to the playoff game and they played in the very frigid cold up in Pittsburgh, and he didn't play well and they didn't play well. Right. But at least he started a playoff right. game. So at least he's he's capable of handling the emotions of the spotlight, right? But, but I think the difference here, Skip, is that the thing that Mahomes brings to the table that Matt Moore doesn't, mm -hmm. with Matt Moore, all you worry about is what's called. Yeah, no, I with agree. With Patrick oh, Mahomes, well, well, whatever it's called, it's a huge drop then, off. Because you can, hey, you can throw the script away with Pat okay. Mahomes if I you agree. can make I, something I, happen. No, obviously. But, but again, last night, both of them completed 10 passes each, both Mahomes and then right. Matt Moore after him. Right. And Matt Moore's went for 117 and Patrick's went for 76 yards. Right. Well, why did Matt Morris go for 117? Because 57 of them went to Tyreek on that crossing mm -hmm. up, right? right? And it was a nice throw. It right. was, he led him. He dropped it right down the chimney. Yep. It, was, it was good. So he's capable of making the plays that develop right before him, right? But the thing is, now, Skip, people don't fear that offense. Yep. That defense is not what you saw last night. That's a poorest Broncos offensive mm -hmm. line and poor play by the quarterback. That defense isn't that good, and now you lose the fear yep. element of that offense. Yep, I got it. So they got to go. They got Packers sun, next Sunday night at home, and they got Vikings at home. They go to Tennessee 50-50, and, and then they got the Chargers in Mexico City on a Skip. Monday night. You know they can yep. lose three out of these four games. Yep, they could. Yep. They could lose four out of four. They could. Yep. They could. Yep. Well, so I wish Patrick Mahomes well. And I wish your pick well because that's it's being threatened. Thanks, But Andy. the good news last night was. Ain't no good news. The good news was the defense showed up in ways you, you have been killing the defense. Skip. And you know what? It looked pretty good. No, Skip. That's all Broncos. That's not, they're okay. not good to skip. The Chiefs defense isn't good. Garrett Bowles, the left tackle and the right tackle for the Denver Broncos mm -hmm. are terrible. Okay. Joe Flacco is a statue. That's why Spagnola blitzed him okay. the entire night. But everybody said they're going to run all over the Chiefs and Philip Lindsay went for 36 and Freeman went for 35. Mm -hmm. So something good was going on with the Kansas City defense, right? Yeah. And I don't know what would possess me to pick a team with Joe Fluco at quarterback because he's always been a regular season disaster waiting to happen. I think he holds the record for single-digit QBR games because yeah. he had an eight last night, and he was horrendously bad. This, see, yep. I was just in Denver last Sunday, yep, Skip. I know. And, you know, I'm hanging all out. You know, I'm in the oldest box. And, yeah. yeah, we glad to have you back. You well, there it is. Never again. Well, it seemed like the Denver Broncos were back, at least for two games, and now they're two and five. So how bad must Tennessee be? Mm. But Tennessee beat white mm -hmm. Cleveland out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's that kind of league. Speaking of a porous O-line, nine sacks for Joe Flacco last night. You know, he woke up this morning sore. And we should certainly also congratulate Andy Reid on his 200th mm -hmm. career win no, last I night. No, I congratulate him. Call Pat Mahomes. 
Skip's Cowboys are two and a half point favorites at Jerry World against the division rival Eagles, according to Fox Bet. The winner claims sole possession of first place in the NFC East. Shannon, who wins this one Sunday night? I really expect them there to be a lot of points on both sides, Skip. Um, I think both defenses are really disappointed in the way they've been playing this year. Um, I thought the Eagles would be much better. And I know you thought the way the Cowboys left off last year, they would pick right up. And they did for the first three games. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to take the Eagles in a close ball game, but I believe it's going to be a high scoring ball game. Um, the Eagles have the number two rush defense, but they're terrible in pass coverage. Um, I'm going to say the Eagles win 30 to 27. And all turnovers are not created equal. And I think the one, th <clears throat> the one thing that Wentz has done a better job this year than what Dak has done, and normally it's Dak doing a better job of this than Wentz, is taking care of the football. Dak has six interceptions, Wentz has three. And I believe the Eagles defense will make one play late in the ball game that will be the difference in the ball game. And I got the Eagles winning a close ball game, but a high scoring ball game. Mm. I got the Eagles 30-27. Hmm. So, for once on this show, when it comes to my Cowboys, I'm barely claiming them at this no, point. No, 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 you barely got right. claiming no, 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 ain't no barely. For once, you well could be right. For once, I have very, very, very little faith in picking the Cowboys to win this game, even at home. I just don't love this game for the Dallas Cowboys, and it's harder and harder to have faith in them because I'll be the first to admit, knowing what I know about pro football, really about any sport, these are very, very bad signs when a team that I believe could win the NFC and get to the Super Bowl in its last two games fell behind 31-3 to at home and then 21-3 to on the road to a Jets team that was 0-4. Bad sign, bad sign. I'm going to say it again. Not one player on my defense, the same defense that shut down Drew Brees and company late last year and shut down Russell Wilson and company in a playoff game later last year, not one player on that defense has lived up to preseason expectations. Not a single one starting... Or contract expectations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Starting with Marcus Lawrence, who is no longer D Marcus Lawrence because there's no D. He's playing no D at all. So he's just Marcus Lawrence, and he got $100 million, and he's on the most wanted list because I barely know he plays in these games. And I raved last year. You even got caught up a little bit in Jalen Smith and Wolf Hunter. Oh! Yeah. The dynamic duo who were changing games, mm -hmm. literally changing games, taking over games, sideline to sideline. Haven't seen them lately. No. I don't know. I'm not even sure they're out there. Now, not that this really matters, I'm down two starting quarterback, uh, excuse Corner. me, cornerbacks, hamstring issues. And once the hamstring goes, you, you can just forget about nah, it. Ain't nothing going I'm talking on. about Byron Jones, Anthony Brown. And... Almost certainly, because they haven't practiced, they will not play. Right. And, and the truth is, I don't even know if that really matters because they haven't been very good anyway. So maybe throw, yeah. throw the backups in. It's like Byron Jones stepped off a cliff, Skip. Totally agree. Considering like what he was last year. Okay. <clears throat> Flip around to my offense. Amari Cooper, I love. He changed life in Dallas. But when it comes to injuries, he's not like the mentally toughest guy. And I'm not... I'm not saying he, he's just a, a deeper thinker, and I think he really values his body, and so he's not one to say, I'm going to run through that brick wall and risk the rest. Of, it, he's the guy, I'm not going to overcompensate. <laughs> so he's gone from severe plantar fasciitis to a really bad ankle to a deep thigh bruise, and he said yesterday he actually hurt the thigh against Green Bay. Really? Nobody knew. And he said he didn't communicate well enough with the training staff. Exactly. Aha. Uh -huh. And so he went out for warm-ups at Jets, and he's thinking, I, I don't even feel like I can run today. But he tried, and he caught one ball for three yards, and he just said, hey, I, I can't do this anymore. Right. And he's out of the game. Well, he says he's going to try to 
practice a little bit today. Do I trust him to be Amari? I do not. I'm sorry. And Randall Cobb is, has a back injury and he still hasn't practiced, so I'm pretty sure he's not going to play. So now Carson Wentz still has Zach Ertz, one of, one of the best tight ends in football. I mean, you can make a case he's right there with that Which guy we saw last night, right? Mm-hmm. And Alshon is back and going great guns. And Aguilar, he drops too many balls, but he's also very dangerous mm-hmm. and can get behind you. So I think that's big advantage in this game for Carson Wentz. And speaking of my quarterback, the two tackles have tried to practice the left tackle, right tackle, obviously Ty Smith, Lyle Collins. And yet, do I, am I sure? I'm, I'm not sure. So I just can't, I try to make a case, make a case, and I can't. I'm going to defend my quarterback one last time because he's all I got. I still believe in my quarterback. I trust my quarterback. He is a gamer. He is a baller. And whatever he's got, he'll give you. Mm-hmm. And he did beat this team twice last year in, in the last game we saw him against the Eagles, and it was at Jerry World in the fourth quarter in overtime. As I continue to tell you, 243 passing yards. Fourth quarter in overtime. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. So does he feel fairly comfortable against a pass defense that has given up the 29th most yards? I, I assume he does. So to your point about higher scoring, yeah, probably. So what, what else do I have to just barely cling to? I got pro football focus. Still says that my team is the fourth best team in pro football. I don't know how, but, but they're, they can justify it with their analytics and metrics, okay? But – they, I, I think they were thinking that Ty Smith and Lyle Collins okay, and Mark Cooper got to go be healthy. So they say the Eagles are the ninth best, so fourth versus ninth. They still say my offense, they rank number one. Not sure how, but they do. Defensively, they don't love my defense is ranked 14th, yours is ranked 16th. So, so maybe that's a coin flip. Right. So what does it bring me to? Ezekiel Elliott, could he be, could, could they finally just say, okay, we give up, we're going to hand it to him 40 times and try to slow the game down, right? As we've seen against Patrick Mahomes. The Eagles have the number one run defense in pro football. So do you think Zeke's going to break out against the Eagles? I don't. So I don't even have that to lean back like, right. oh, last gasp. They can just keep handing it to 21 and maybe he'll start doing this all day. I'm, I'm not sure that's going to happen. So where does that leave me as the point spread starts to fall? Because it opened at three and now it's down to 2.5. So there's the bandwagon is rolling for the Eagles, and I get it because I fear it's going to run over me. Told you it was going to happen. Yep. <laughs> All I got going is that your coach, Dougie Prediction, <laughs> right out of the box on Monday, maybe smarting a little bit off their loss at Minnesota, maybe a little thin-skinned and <laughs> defensive, He flat out guaranteed, and he tried to backtrack it, but he guaranteed a win. We're going to go down there and win the football game. So God knows my coach can't motivate my team. God knows he's not going to fix it. He's not going to shake it up. There's not going to be shocking lineup changes or strategic changes. So I'm going to have to depend on your coach to be the reason my team somehow rises. So he motivated you guys. That's all I got. Seriously, that their manhood got called out. Because you know what? I believe it. if we could put him on a lie detector right now, he would say, we're going to kick their ass and yeah. believe it. Yeah. Like, believe it heart yeah. and soul. Like, strategically, like, watch the tape. Right. Ah, oh, we'll, we'll go up and down the field oh, on him all day long. I'm sure he told his team yeah. that in the meeting. Right. And my offensive line, all those high-paid linemen, they have gotten whipped starting by your Saints. They, they get whipped at the line of scrimmage all too often. Zeke can't even get out of the starting blocks half the time. He had 10 runs against the Jets that went for one yard or fewer, and there's really no place to go. So all I know is at some point, like last night, I think the Chiefs, they, they got sick and tired of hearing how bad they were, and so they rose up last night. On the big stage, they said, you know, and this is Sunday night football. Oh, that's so, what you're hoping up. Yeah. So they're going to say, okay, Dougie P, watch this. This is who we are. This is who we used to be and who we're going to be starting with this game. That's all I got. And I'm, I'm clinging just barely to this because I'm about to fall off the cliff back, backwards. <laughs> and if, if they lose this game to fall to three and four and lose four in a row, it's going to be really hard for me to hang on, even though they'll only be a game back in right. the division. If they win it, 
Would it be a springboard? I don't even know that. But I do think they love to play against this team. And I do believe this team will bring out whatever the best is in, in my team. And so I'm going to go some crazy end. I, I don't have a score as high as yours. I think there's going to have to be turnovers back and forth. Right. I'm going Dallas 24, Philly 23 on a walk-off by my man, Brett Maher. I need him to be my man this time because he'll hit, yeah. you know, 62 yarders, but then he misses 38 yarders, with, right? With, with no meaning. Yeah, with 62 no meaning. didn't mean it, anything. It didn't at that moment. There's no pressure exactly. on Exactly. So I'm going to say, with meaning, walk off 24 to 23 Dallas. And I can't do it on paper. I, I can't justify it. Sorry. With those two defenses, mm-hmm. I just think there's gonna, points are going to get scored. I don't love either defense. But I will say this. I like Philly's front seven more than I like Dallas's front seven because I haven't seen any life. I haven't seen any energy. I haven't seen any urgency. I haven't seen anything. But when I watch Philly's front seven, it's pretty good. Oh, yeah. It can be very good. Barnett, Cox. Oh, yeah, whoa, they, got, they got a nice front seven. Whoa. It's just if they don't get the quarterback on the ground yep. and the quarterback has time to throw the ball down the field, it's that back four that leaves a lot to be desired. Mm. Your back four is not exactly, you know, murderer's row either. Yep. So my biggest fear is I'm going to have to come in here on Monday and say, how about them Eagles? That's what I'm going to have to say. <laughs> how about them Eagles? I might have a little something special. Yeah. Well, you got me on the run, and I'm almost ready to give up, but not quite. Go keep you on the run, too. Because maybe the unsung hero of this game was Dougie Prediction. Nope. Maybe. Yep. Two more picks by that. Yeah. Could be. He's actually got three picks to Carson Wentz's three because three he did not deserve. Don't do that. Skip, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. He yeah. has six. Yeah. 11 touchdowns, six picks. <sighs> My guy has 13 and three. Yep. Yeah. Well, no Here we go. Jason Garrett is feeling the pressure, and Dak Prescott had some strong words for his teammates this week as well, encouraging folks to prepare more, prepare better. So we'll see if that has any impact. <laughs> It'll be interesting to watch. No mercy. All right, last night, Patrick Mahomes dislocated his right kneecap on a QB sneak, did not return to the game. After the game, however, he was in high spirits. He gave the postgame speech. He is set to undergo an MRI today, and it's being reported that absolute best-case scenario, Mahomes misses just three weeks. Hmm. Shannon, does the injury to Mahomes make the Patriots now a lock to win the AFC? No, <clears throat> no, for the very same reason that we have these questions about the Chiefs and how good they can be. Injury. Yeah. You mean to tell me Tom Brady gets injured? We, we, we still feel as strong about them? Tom Brady is what makes people be- believe that the Patriots are invincible. Obviously, Coach Belichick's there, and, and we still believe with the defense. Um, I don't, still don't know, Skip, and I don't know if you believe how good this defense actually is because the team that they played, with the exception, of, I think maybe one team that they've beaten will make the playoffs. Probably Buffalo. We're going to see how it plays out. Still a lot of football to go. But these other teams, Washington is not making the playoffs. The Jets aren't making the playoffs. And some of these other teams they've beaten, they're not making the playoffs. Well, they got the Dolphins, too. <laughs> and they got the Dolphins again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They got the Dolphins again. They've yeah. already beaten yeah. them once. Yeah. Go get them again. They, they get to end the season at home against the Dolphins. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so injury is, is the greatest neutralizer in all of sports. And, and it's so hard to say, oh, it's a lock. There are no locks in sports. That's why we love sports so much, Skip, because, especially football, because it's not a series. Because best of seven, three out of five, anything, you know, mm-hmm. I got three chances. Of, but one game, a bounce here, a tip there, win here, and who knows what can happen. Mm-hmm. So, no, they're not a lock. The Texans look really good. Yeah. Deshaun Watson will keep the Texans in every single game. Yep. They can run the ball. Carlos Hyde is running the ball extremely well. The problem, the, the, what concerns me, Skip, is that I have yet to see the Houston Texans defense ever show up against the Patriots offense. I don't worry about Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson is going to do his thing. A big game, bright stage, is something about that 12 that brings the best out of number four. Mm-hmm. The Colts, 
they can play keep away. Yep. And I believe that's also a way that you have to beat him. Maybe. The close offensive line, they got the best offensive line yep. in football. Yep. We talk about the Cowboys, we talk no, about the Eagles. We it's don't talk about the Cowboys offensive <laughs> we line. We don't talk about the Cowboys anymore. <laughs> the Colts got the best <laughs> offensive line. Yep. They're littered with number one draft picks, just like uh, uh, the Cowboys. But these guys, Quentin Nelson mm -hmm. and uh, Costanza, those guys are unbelievable up front. And they do a great mm -hmm. job of running the football, controlling the clock. And I believe that's also a way that you got to keep 12 off the field. Mm -hmm. Keep them off the field. So so, Skip, no, it's not a foregone conclusion that they're a lock. Um, they're a good football team, obviously. Um, it looks like they're going to have – I always felt they're going to have one of these home – you know, one of these top seeds, one or two. Looks like they're going to be the number one seed. Um, but, no, Skip, it's not a foregone conclusion. There are no such things as locks. Uh, the Chiefs are in a world of trouble. Packers at home, Vikings at home, you mentioned this, tight, at Titans, at Chargers. They're in trouble. They're in trouble. I, I know you like Matt Moore. Matt Moore is, is, is serviceable. But the Packers and the Vikings, they can get after the quarterback. They can. And their offenses can put points on the board. Mm -hmm. And now, Skip, we don't have to take unnecessary risk because we don't believe your offense is as high-powered without the guy that's pulling the trigger, which is Pat Mahomes. Mm -hmm. So, but the, the, to answer uh, Jen's questions, no, I do not believe the Pats are a lot. They're comfortable. They're uh, clearly in the catbird seat, but I like the Texans and I like the Colts. Mm. <sighs> Silly me. I thought the Patriots were a lock before last night. Mm -hmm. And obviously, this to me makes them even more of a lock. And I do agree with your big picture premise about this league. It's just a crazy league. It's because of reverse order drafting and everybody's got talent and Weird stuff happens that we can't explain mm -hmm. because from week to week, a team just finds itself and catches fire. And you say, well, what just happened? Right. Denver just won two games and looked dominating on defense. Mm -hmm. And then just when you're ready to jump back on the bandwagon, they stunk it up last night like you rarely see a, really? a, a storied franchise stink it up mm. on a big stage. That was that, awful. That was an embarrassment. That was. All that, was, time that, was all, that was all time embarrassment. Okay, so w w even the Eagles we just talked about, they went up to Green Bay and beat a really good team and looked good doing it. Yes. Right? After falling behind by 14. Okay. They did. And yet these same Eagles, I don't know, they, at home they lost to Detroit. And then they went to Atlanta, and I know they should have won the game because Wentz threw the, the past Aguilar that should have won it. But they shouldn't have been in that position in the first place because Atlanta's a bad football team. So they lost to Especially Atlanta. Especially defensively. Right. And then Philly whose defense I do have some respect for in the front seven, gave up 38 points that easily could have been 40-something in an all-time embarrassment at Minnesota just last Sunday. Yep. So what's going on here? I don't know. So you, you can make the I don't, you know, who knows case right. with this league. But to me, I keep looking down New England's schedule, mm -hmm. and I told you I'm pretty sure they're going to be favored to win every game all the way home. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. So they go to Baltimore on November 3rd. Do we love Baltimore? It's every, you know, kind of every other Sunday we do, but we don't every Sunday, right? Is Lamar ready to take on Tom Brady and, and outplay him? Maybe, but I doubt it. Then they have to go, the Patriots, they have to go to Philly, November 17th. Okay, dangerous, but with that pass defense, you know, I, I think Dak can do damage. I know Tom Brady can do damage to that pass defense, right? <laughs> and then at Houston, it could be the game of the year. Right. Seriously, right. It, it could be because I have nothing but respect for Deshaun against Tom Brady. He's he come close twice. The second time wasn't that close. But the one time at Foxborough, he was really good. Do I trust Bill O'Brien against Bill Belichick? His, you know, the old chip and, off the block. And Romeo. Romeo's in Romeo, D.C. now. Another one? Yeah. Guess what? They're 0-5 against Bill Belichick mm -hmm. together in Houston. Mm -hmm. They're 0-5. So do you really? I, I don't know. And then we had already circled December 8th, Kansas City at Foxborough. No, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not feeling it right now. So the odds are that Brady and Belichick are going to get two home games off a of, uh, two-week, you know, they get two weeks to prepare for two home games mm -hmm. at Foxborough. Which one of these teams is going to go in there and uproot them, dethrone them? Right. I don't know. I don't see it. But, but Skip, like I said, the unknown. Okay. The great, what's the great equalizer? Well, Injury. Injuries. Okay, if Tom Brady goes down, I'm knocking on wood. Right. <laughs> okay, you got me. Yeah. 
Jared Stidham. Now, that would be the dream scenario for Bill Belichick. You're right. It might be. And if he could figure out how to get Jared Stidham home, boy, that would do it. But that would slam the door on number 12. So, you know, if, yep. if something were unforeseen, and I hope that doesn't happen, Brady goes down and Stidham comes in and he gets them to the Super Bowl, you know it's over. It's over. No, that, that would do it. That it's would over. be period, end of story. Yeah. And Tom Brady would finish his career elsewhere. But, but for me, Skip, look, the Patriots' defense have been very, very good. But I believe even okay. you have questions. I, I do. How good? But, but, again, I'm just going off the last game I saw him against the Giants and Daniel Jones. But my eye test tells me they're pretty good. Right. That my eye test tells me they might be the best defense he's had in about 10 years. Maybe. Maybe. Because I'm seeing so many different pass rushers. Jamie Collins has come back to life out of nowhere, right? But Skip, you look at these quarterbacks, Skip. You said Luke Falk. You said Luke. You told me they cut Luke Falk. Well, they did. Okay, and you. Uh, uh, that, was, that, that was after the Eagles got <laughs> to play Luke Falk. Miami. Yep. Okay. They, they went from they went from right. Fitzpatrick to Rosen. Okay. Now they're back to Fitzpatrick. Okay. Case Keenum. And, and the Gi- Giants got a Giants got a rookie. I mean, come on, okay. Daniel Jones is a rookie, Skip. Come on, I, I mean, I, I get it. He's a high draft pick, right. but he's All a right. rookie. That's fair. Okay, I got you. Yet when I look at Houston and I say, how good are they? So they're. They're eighth in uh, points allowed, so they're pretty good on defense. Mm-hmm. Not great, but eighth in points That's allowed. Is it, is it good enough to get home? I don't know. And they're 16th in points scored, which is not good enough. Pro Football Focus says they're the 14th best team in the NFL right now, and take it for what it's worth. Right. But that's what their metrics and analytics say. Mm-hmm. Is it good enough to dethrone Brady? I just don't know. I know, because you're asking a dome team to go on the road in yep. January yep. to Foxborough. That's what's going to happen. And that's normally a recipe for disaster for yep. the dome team. Dome teams doesn't normally do well, Skip. Going outdoors late January mm-hmm. with an opportunity to go on to bigger things. Mm-hmm. We've seen it far too many times. That's why dome teams try to do everything they possibly can to get that game at home yep. late in the year because we want you to come to us. Okay. St. Louis, you come to us. You get on the greatest show on turf. You come to our building, okay. and we'll see what happens. So next up for Tom Brady is Sam Darnold, who just torched my Cowboys. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You picking him? No. Nope. Stop. Nope. Well, okay. So but, but you know Greg Williams going to get some hits on the quarterback. Okay. He will get some hits. So <laughs> could that to- be the game, knock on wood, that Tom goes down? Could be. That's probably the likeliest game yeah, he would yeah, go I mean, down. He go get some hits now. The thing is, now, he'll do some things that's unsound. Yep. He will bring guys from a side. You're like, well, but you just left everybody on that side. And if Tom sees it, it's going to be a home run. Mm-hmm. But he will get hits on Brady. And flags will get thrown on <laughs> Jets. Win a bet? Yeah, yeah. Win a bet? Yeah. And Tom will get rid of the ball quicker than you've ever seen him get yeah. rid of the ball. Yeah. And then he'll be looking at the ref like, seriously? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, he'd definitely be looking yeah. around like, yeah. huh? My quarterback was on his back about 12 times in that game and got rocked. But my quarterback does not turn to the official because he, he sort of enjoys the contact. I'm no, knocking on no, wood. No, the thing is, Skip, he hasn't been in the league long no, enough. No. Give him a couple more years. <laughs> He'll get seasoned like Breeze and like Brady, like these oh. other guys, Roethlisberger. He'll get like, oh, I can just look at him and the next time they'll give me the flag. Yeah. Okay. So, to sum it up, biggest threat to me is the Houston Texans who lost at the Saints early. No shame there. And then the they, they lost at home to the Panthers. Panthers, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Panthers. Kyle Allen beat them at home, and it was 16 to 10. Yeah. World beaters? Not yet. No. Okay. But they played really good the last two weeks. They yeah. played really good no football the last two weeks. No mercy. NBA.com releasing their annual general manager's poll. When asked who is the best leader... It was Damian Lillard with 41% of the vote. Steph Curry followed with 37%. LeBron rounded out the top three with only 15% of the vote. Mm, Mm. Shannon, how much of a problem you got with this one? (laughs) They need to stop it. Mm. (laughs) Skip, I love Dame Lillard. I thank the world of him. I think he's a superstar. I thought he was a superstar before he got the credit that he deserved. Because you watch him play, you understand he can do it all. Can dribble, can shoot, take you off the bounce. Everything. And I think he's genuinely a good guy. I really right? do think yep. he's genuinely a good mm-hmm. guy. But they need to stop this. You know what these general managers are, are mad about? About what transpired last year. Because every year they've taken this poll, LeBron James has been voted the best leader. Has he really? I didn't know. The that. best leader. But okay. you know what happened? What happened last year, Skip Bayless? Mm-hmm. This Anthony Davis thing came yes. up. And everybody was talking about how it played out in the locker room. I can't believe that LeBron James would do that to his locker room. He... 
they blame him for snatching Anthony Davis for, from the Pelicans. How? Anthony Davis could have said no. But see what happens anytime Lebr- LeBron is involved with something, they automatically assume Le- LeBron is an agent of clutch. Rich Paul is also Anthony Davis' agent. They try to put two and two together. Oh, this is what happened. No. So you think their premise is that he alienated all those kids in the locker room who are now playing for your team? Yes. And what what are we seeing, Skip? We see that LeBron James, before, free agents didn't move like this. LeBron James empowered free agents to say, you know what? I want out. Mm. Leave. Demand a trade. Request a trade. And GMs don't like that. See, LeBron forces the GM to keep every year. We're going for it every year. Ain't no rebuilding. Ain't no, you know, hey, it's a, it's a process. There is none of that mm-hmm. if LeBron James is on your roster. And GMs don't like that. Now, Dame Lillard says, you know what, I'm happy here. It, it, hey, if somebody want to come join, link up with me, I'm good. That's fine. GMs like to hear that. Mm-hmm. See, GMs like to hear guys okay. say I'm loyal to the soil. Mm-hmm. Because now, they got no problem trading you and get. We making the team better. We like this move. We felt it can make the team better. But the moment a player says, you know, I want to get up out of here because I want to go somewhere else because I want to, you know, win mm-hmm. and be better, that's a problem. Mm. That's this that's what this is all about. It's hard for me to believe a leader, all of a sudden LeBron is not the leader, has been voted the best leader for the last eight, nine, ten years, mm. goes to uh, uh finals, four straight finals in Miami, comes back, goes again, and now all of a sudden. This is all about the Anthony Davis trade. This is all about the power that the free agents now request and trade. And some of these guys says, I want out even before my contract's up. These general managers are upset about that. Mm-hmm. Dame is a good guy. This is not a shot at Dame, but I'm just telling you what these mm-hmm. GMs are upset about. Mm-hmm. And this is why they dock uh, uh, LeBron. Mm. You do make some very good points on this. So I'm going to go bigger picture here. If, in fact, a poll got taken of all NBA players... Who's the most popular player among you guys in this league, among the players? I think LeBron would win it. Yeah. I do believe that. Yeah. You cover the league. Do you, pro, maybe? There's a tremendous level of respect, respect. for him. Absolutely. And I, I think there's a, a tremendous level of just likability mm-hmm. because he goes out of his way to fraternize with the opposition, mm-hmm. which that is the opposite of Michael Jordan because a lot of guys – despised Michael Jordan, but they feared him. Right. But in this case, LeBron just goes out of his way to know everybody, to compliment everybody, mm-hmm. kids coming up. He wants to, to develop little sort of big brother relationships Except with you've them. You've never heard him say an ill word okay. about anybody. No, no, that's true. I give you all that. Now we get to the leadership question. And I was not aware, I was just taking this poll just in and of itself, but if, if I had voted in the previous polls in which he was voted, you say the best, I would have voted for, I don't know who else I would have voted for. I'd have to really think hard about Damien, maybe. I'm not, I'm not sure about <laughs> Steph. I'm, I'm not sure. But I am sure that I don't think LeBron is a great leader. And I'll tell you why. There's just too much drama going around. Uh, he, he has a force field around him that just creates drama on a nightly basis. He, he thrives on it. Others can't. Because it's just too much. And we've seen it especially once he left Dwayne, who I thought was the sort of bedrock cornerstone leader of the Heat franchise, Mm -hmm. and taught LeBron a lot about how to handle your business Mm -hmm. as a leader. And LeBron was becoming a leader, and then he left Dwayne to go home again. And it was a struggle. And Kyrie never bought completely into LeBron, and we know what happened. He finally said, I got it. Then he now he wants to sort of make up with him. But, hey, what did he say? Yeah. Well, he reached out to LeBron when he did, because he thought just being the best player made you the leader, but he didn't understand. He the, did the, not. And Kyrie proved <laughs> to be a very poor leader because it's hard. Uh-huh. So with LeBron, there's too much of this passive, aggressive social media post where you say, what? It's this cryptic. It's like, are you criticizing or are you blame deflecting? LeBron is not one to step up and say, it's my fault. I I assume full responsibility for our three-game losing streak or whatever it might be. He he wants to blame deflect because he's very proud to a fault. And it's hard to be the leader when you won't just step up and say, it's my fault. I'll take all the the slings and arrows from the media. Shoot them at me because I'll take them because I can handle them. I don't ever get that from LeBron. He don't need to because you're already right. They're going to write about it anyway. It's his fault. So he don't need to blame. He don't need to take no. He don't need to take any more credit because it's already written about it. Okay. So 
on alienating the kids last year. I got no problem with that because he just wanted to win. And so he's juggling, you know, like saying, do I want Anthony Davis or all these kids? Uh, I think I'll take Anthony Davis. Right. And all y'all can go to New Orleans. All of you. We well, can ship the whole team out. And that's not, that's not a sign of poor leadership. Right. That's just wanting to win, man. Right. I mean, just... I can be better off with Anthony Davis, yeah, so that's not poor leadership. And, and Lonzo, on a, on a podcast just last month, the yeah. person who mentored me the most last year was probably LeBron, just okay. being with him pretty much the whole year. Same team, same bus, same hotel. I was just with him always, just picking up what I can from the greatest to ever play. Skip, they, un Skip, they understand this is a business. I'm sure they wanted to be with the Lakers. But at the end of the day, LeBron wants to win more than anything. And if LeBron really sincerely thought he could win with those guys, they would have still been there. Okay. But AD is a generational talent. All right, I got it. So do I think LeBron burned the bridges to all those kids? No. I don't think so, but I don't know Brandon Ingram well, uh, well enough. He, he sort of keeps to himself. Right. He seemed to take it the most personally. Right. So it's possible Brandon Ingram, not real keen on LeBron at right. this point. But here's the point. This is the drama king. This, this is when he completely lost me, and you're, you're going to get sick and tired of me bringing this up. But game one of the finals two years back at Oakland, they've got them dead to rights. And we know how the last sequence unfolded. I thought LeBron should have pulled up on Steph and taken the jump shot to win the game. He only scored 48 points to that point. 49. 49. And he had made some unbelievable number of outside the paint jump shots that he rarely gets on that kind of a roll mm -hmm. outside the paint. And then we know what happened with JR and the blunder and, it, and everything just unraveled. And what happened in the timeout after that, this play occurred, LeBron distanced himself from the whole team and he went and sat down the bench from the Give team. Give me right there, he wants to see removed. Uh, I mean, Skip, okay. you make it but seem like- he's sitting away. He's saying, I don't want to associate with that mess. Skip, you make it seem like the guy okay. was up there getting popcorn. Okay. I mean, he, the guy sitting right there next to JR, come on. He's pouting, he's pouting, you can't pout. You, you actually got the best case scenario. If no, I presented don't. it to LeBron before the game, you get to go to overtime Tied. You, you've tied the, the Invincible Warriors in no, no, game no, no, one no, no, at no, no, Oracle. No, 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 no. Don't, say, don't yeah. say that. Say LeBron, with four seconds left in the ball game, JR got the basketball two feet from the, from the rim. Mm -hmm. That's the best case scenario. But what's going to happen is he's going to forget where he is. Okay. And he's going to dribble the ball outside the three-point line. Okay, but the better case scenario is LeBron pulls up from the free throw line and shoots a jumper right up over little six-foot-three Steph Curry, and it's game over, and LeBron wins. Now, they were down one, so it's going to be sink or swim, about make or miss. What about if, if an NBA basketball player make two free throws, that's an 80% career free throw shooter? What if George Hill does that? What did I tell you? When my Spurs got rid of George Hill, they traded him for number two. I was happy because I told you, George Hill isn't that guy. I don't want George Hill shooting free throws for my quote unquote life. I don't. And I like him as a player, but I don't love him in that situation. But for, don't put the game in George Hill's hands. Put it in LeBron's hands. No, you shoot did, it. He did. Yeah. That's what, the ball was in his hands. Okay. He made the best play. Mm. And I live with the decision that he made. What's which, the best play? Which was pass the ball up under him, up under the goal. And Clay Thompson says, you know what? I'm, I'm going to try to rip your head mm. off. I'm not going to give you a layup. I'm going to force you to go to the line. You would think, mm. okay. But, Skip, you know what this is about. Okay. You see, we talked about it all last and year. by the way, i got to finish what happened in overtime. Okay. LeBron refused to even take a shot for the first two and a half minutes of overtime. Oh. He's got 49 points, to your point. And he refuses to shoot for two and a half minutes as they fall behind by seven and it's game over until he finally d decides, oh, I think I'll shoot one now. And then he comes into the post game and he's wearing some cast or something that, after that, the, he after that, the that, 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 that was after game. No, four. I know, but but then he said it was that game that yeah. he went in and yeah. broke his hand yeah. against the the whiteboard. Yeah. I think so. Stop. No, it'll no, no stop. Stop it. It'll stop. Jr. Cost is that one. Well, that virtuoso. I just don't know. You're such a drama king. It's hard to lead a team because you, in the end, you are a great solo act. You're you're the best passer in basketball, but you are a solo act. You're the act. best leader in basketball. No, no I don't you're see Best it. leader, I do. And you know that's why they did this. You know they're upset because they feel that what he did to his own locker room by alienating those young guys, mm -hmm. ripping Anthony Davis from the Pelicans locker room, they feel that's all LeBron. And all these other guys, I want out. I want out. I'm leaving. 
They blame LeBron for that. Okay. Oh, because what did they say? Oh, Larry would have never done You say that all the time. Michael would have never wanted to go play with him. Mm. Magic would have never done that. Oh, no. Uh, Larry Bird, they wanted to beat each other. Okay, that, that was them. Mm. And I don't knock them for that. But that's not this generation. They didn't have this. All right. So I hate to go completely historical here, but I can't even begin to put LeBron in the leadership stratosphere with Magic Johnson or Larry Bird or Tim Duncan, who I think was one of the most underrated leaders ever. He was the quiet, stoic leader. What you think? The what, what you leader. think? What you think? What you think Magic was like? You don't think Magic probably went to Dr. Buss and get him up out of here and get me somebody that I can play with? Okay, that's fine. Okay. I told you I don't have any problem Hold with on. that. So, so Magic goes to Dr. Buss. Get, get him up out of here. I need some better players. LeBron says, I want to play with AD. He a poor loser. He a poor leader. No, no, that's not. Maybe that's what they're saying. And, and they're wrong if that's what they're concluding. You know they mad at Bron. Because mm. Bron got that power. Mm. Bron got that Thor hammer. That's probably and, true. And he, Skip, we, nobody in yep. the history of the NBA has nope. had the kind of power nope. that that guy had. Nobody. Nobody. I mean, maybe Jordan did, but he didn't wield it like no. this. Yeah. Jordan didn't have that kind of power. His own. Jerry Cross wouldn't let Michael no. make no decision. That's a fact. We wearing black jerseys today. I want to wear white. Well, you'll be the only one out there in black because we mm-hmm. wearing white. He wouldn't let him make any decision. We're going to pay you this, and you're going to like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. But O'Bron James said what? I'm playing for the max. I'm never taking less than my value. Mm. I want the max. Giving me the max. Mm. And I want that guy, that guy, and that guy. Now you go get him. I'll let you figure out how you're going to get him, but I want him. Tim Duncan said, I'll take $5 million a year. See? Go get a bunch of new pieces. See, that's what you do. Yep. Skip, mm-hmm. let, that's Timmy. Mm. I don't knock Timmy for doing that. Mm. But that's not what LeBron wanted to do. Kobe, nobody ever knocked Kobe for taking max contract after max contract. He hamstrung him. Because mm. at the end, he had that big old contract, Skip, and they could get no one. Mm. But everybody look at but Kobe got to finish his career with the mm. Lakers. Nobody criticized uh, uh, Kobe, but mm. they knocked LeBron for taking Max. Mm. I wish he would. If he ever took less than the Max, I'm done with him. Okay. By the Ow. way, Timmy D is in Timmy Duncan back <laughs> on the bench in San Antonio. Maybe this means the Spurs will be the surprise team of this year. Is he going to play? Uh, maybe. Because you know what LaMarcus Aldridge do come playoff time, right? <laughs> I know you what know- DeMar DeRozan does come playoff time. Well, winning ah. is always the goal. And if you're yep. interested, 46% of GMs predicted it would be the Clippers and Kawhi that would win it all to this year. Bucks came in second, and Lakers were third. Number Just 11% third. of the no, vote. Number two had four steals last night. Here they come. No mercy. All right, so the good news is the Chiefs bounced back from last week's defeat with a 30-6 victory last night in Denver. However, that W had quite a hefty price tag. Patrick Mahomes dislocated his right kneecap on a quarterback sneak at the beginning of the second quarter. The reigning MVP would end up walking to the locker room under his own power, but he could not return to the game. After the contest, Mahomes tweeted, Awesome team win. Love my brothers. Thank you for all the prayers. Everything looking good so far. We are now joined by Fox Sports NFL analyst Eric Dickerson. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, everyone. All right, how much do you think Andy Reid was to blame for calling a QB sneak on that play for Pat (laughs) Sidgwick? That sounds ridiculous. Look, (laughs) he has no blame. This is football. This is not pity, Pat. You know, you're going to get hit. A quarterback sneak is a very low-impact play. Um, I think, Skip, you would know this. The, the, the quarterback that's, that's, to me, does the most quarterback sneaks in the National Football League is Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, I feel like I thought it was a good call. You know, if you want to blame someone, there's no one to blame. You blame the offensive line. It's second and one. You can't get a yard. It's third and one. You can't get a yard. So what's the low-impact play to run? Let's run a quarterback sneak. I mean, he got, he's a good athlete. Um, and, and people say, well, you know, he had a bad ankle. But it wasn't his ankle. It was his knee that wound up hurt. You know, that's just, that, that's football. That's what happens. When I think of Patrick Mahomes, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, I think of people saying, you know, that, that he, he made Andy Reid. And Andy Reid this. Andy Reid made Patrick Mahomes, really, because he moved up to get Patrick Mahomes. He saw something in Patrick Mahomes that very few people saw. Very few. Very few people yep. saw it. Because he, he was all over the board. But yep. he saw that. Uh, the Saints saw it. Uh, they, they, want, they want to get him. Yep. But most definitely, you know, this is not Andy Reid. I see what, I, I see what Shannon looking at. Like, yeah, he's like, he, he like a dog. I just can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but this is not his fault. I mean, that's 
<laughs> you know, this football, dog, they hit. Let me tell you why I disagree with okay, you. Okay, okay. I agree with you with there, when you step on the field, there's risk. But there's also something called unnecessary risk. You know he's been nursing that injury. He started out in week one, he got a hurt in Jacksonville. And then I think it was week three, when they played the Colts. The Colts. So week four. Week four, he got it stepped on again. And it really, he ended up leaving the game. So you know that. You put him in harm's way. And, and, and I know you're talking about Tom Brady, Tom Brady. If Tom Brady has a calf injury and you quarterback sneak him, just because he did it, you still took an unnecessary risk just because it worked out doesn't mean it was a smart decision. I can run across the road 15 times, not get hit. That don't mean it's a smart decision. I'm taking unnecessary risk. I'm going to die one day, but I, I took an unnecessary <laughs> risk. Pat Mahomes playing the quarterback position. Yeah, he dropped back the pass. They could have easily hit him and took. But that's the risk of playing the position. Hand it to him again. Let Shady McCoy, Shady McCoy, if the offensive line can't get four, 30, second and one, 31, fourth and one, so be it. But I'm not putting I'm not putting my homeboy in that situation, Skip. I just can't. Because everything that you hope to accomplish is riding on 15 on mm -hmm. 15's uh, ankle. Mm -hmm. And now you've got him on the shelf. Now you're gonna look back. Now, mark my words, they got 10 days. They got the Packers, they got the Vikings at Titans, at at uh at the uh, at the char at, here yep. at the Charges. We no, go it's at Mexico. I think. Okay, Mexico, yep, Mexico. Yep. Monday night. Man. Yep. So we're gonna see. Yep. He's gonna wish. <laughs> he's going to wish he had this one back because he could have got out of this game, Skip. I believe he could have got out of this game with no injury, had ten days off, and given that ankle a little more time to heal, and probably not even have this. Mm. But I'm a firm believer. If he gets hurt, Skip, doing his, and I know quarterback, the quarterback sneak is a normal play, but that's a risk you didn't have to take. Mm. Skip, I'm uh, tell you a uh, story. I was, uh, I think it was my second year, I partially separated my uh, left shoulder. And I still played. But Dan says, I'm not going to wham, I'm not going to make you wham block. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put you or line you up on the left side and make you, use, you can use that right shoulder. Dan Reeves. Dan Reeves, the, coach. the head coach, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I used my right shoulder, mm. but I didn't do any wham blocking. Yep. That, mm. Because don't take any unnecessary risk in a situation like that. Yes, I had to block. But if I can avoid a situation like that, avoid it. Mm. So, Mr. Dickerson. <sighs> yes. Mr. No, Sharp and I opened this show by <laughs> locking horns on this topic. <laughs> and fortunately for me, you were on my side on this topic. <laughs> but I will restate my case that I actually have been covering this game longer than you guys have played it because I started way, way back when I was with the Miami Herald right out of school, out of Vanderbilt, covering, believe it or not, Don Shula's Miami Dolphins. They were pretty good in those days. Mm -hmm. And then I went to L.A. with Chuck Knox's Rams, and then I went to Dallas with Tom Landry Ground and Jimmy Chuck. Johnson's. Yeah, Ground Chuck here, but Tom Landry and Jimmy <laughs> Johnson's Cowboys. And then I wound up in the Bay Area where Bill Walsh, I got to know very well, was the sort of impresario overseer Special of advisor. the yeah. San Francisco 49ers. So I've been around a lot of good football people and I've watched way too much football for one lifetime, says my wife Ernestine. But <laughs> that being said, I cannot remember one time I've ever seen a quarterback hurt on a quarterback sneak. Not one time. Maybe you guys remember one, but I don't. So I looked it up this morning and Tom Savage knock on wood for Tom Savage, wherever he is, because he's not in football anymore. But he did get hurt one time in one of his few starts for the Houston Texans because as he started to sneak, the hole opened completely up and he seemed kind of shocked and he just kept running forward and he went helmet to helmet with a launch charging <laughs> linebacker and he got concussed. They weren't even sure he, he continued to play for a while, but he was concussed. Okay, so could that happen? Sure, that could happen. But back to your point, which was my point to open this show. The greatest quarterback sneaker of all time, and it's not even close, is Tom Brady. He has run the quarterback sneak more than 200 times in his career, and it's his pet play. He loves his play. They scout it, they, they study it, and they, they know going in with the game plan, we can go here against this guy, here against this guy. Do you go left or you go right? And Brady has perfected the art of ducking and pushing off as hard as he can and burrowing under the pile. Because you only usually need a half yard or one yard. And we just saw Tom Brady at age 42 
on the Thursday night stage one week ago against the New York Giants, he called, he ran the quarterback sneak five times in that game, and he scored twice, if we could see those again, because he just burrows under the pile. And this is the quarterback who most wants to protect himself in the whole league because he's an old-ass man. That's what you said, <laughs> right? That's what you called him. So what? this is the guy who says, this is the least risky play I can run. I love this play. I'd run it ten times a game because there's little to no risk of getting hurt. And he did have, reportedly, a calf injury all through September that lingered into October, and it forced them to go get Cody Kessler because Tom couldn't practice. Mm -hmm. So they needed, a, so to speak, camp arm just to th run the scout team right. because Jared Stenham was taking most of the first team snaps, and they just needed an arm. So, again, he was still running quarterback sneaks because he didn't think that was risky to his calf. This is the f most freakish injury, or one of the most, I've ever seen. Right. Because I don't even understand how your left ankle is hurt and you say overcompensation, but it's not like you're running full speed down the field. You're kind of ducking underneath and bodies are flying and Derek Wolf kind of comes from the side and comes across you as you twist into the pile. Right. And it's a rugby scrum, but, but how your knee pops out, I can't even begin to fathom. It's like the weirdest, freakiest injury you could imagine. But, but let me ask you a question, Skip. Let's just say for the sake of argument, Tom Brady has that calf mm -hmm. and Coach Belichick runs a bootleg and he pulls his hamstring. Okay, but but he doesn't run boot. I don't, but I'm just, I can't I'm just saying. Last boot leg. But that but that's okay, a play, okay, right? But he wouldn't. Dude, he, he wouldn't, wouldn't do, do that. It. He just wouldn't so do it. My, but I'm saying, right? Okay. Coach Belichick wouldn't put him in harm's okay. way. You, and but if but if Tom Brady goes back to pass and he hurts some muscle, okay, that's okay. the risk that you take in a normal play. Okay. But he, I believe, just and I could be wrong, but I don't think I am in this case. You were wrong. <laughs> you were wrong. I just believe he opened him up to. To unnecessary risk. Okay, I got it. So why does Tom Brady love the sneak? Why does he think it's safe on him physically and safe as a play? Because you can attest to this. Short yardage goal line plays, quick hitters, even though you ran from a deep eye formation, you got to hit it quick, quick if you're yeah. going to if you're going to get the yard, especially if you're going to go over the top. Well, you got to get eight because you're already seven yards well, deep. Well, no, I, I keep saying a quarterback okay. sneak is, is low impact. Okay. I mean, it's, it's like you said, it's pushing. You know, it's almost like falling forward, and you got the guys in front, mm -hmm. and you just fall. Like you said, to me, that's just a freak accident. Okay. So this how is... many times in your exchanges? Because one of the toughest exchanges in pro football, college has different, you know, like option pitch, but but that quick hitter yeah. at the goal. Line, where it's, you know, and, and can you not lose the handle oh, on that right play? Oh, right quick, because the quarterback, they, they don't want you seven yards. They want you a little bit closer. Right. Sure. So he turn around right quick and, and, and get it yeah, to you. and you don't quite get you, the you handle. See, you see more of those fumbles happen, Skip, with yep. the fullback. Mm -hmm. You know, they okay, line up in the eye, well, and they turn around and hand it to the fullback, and yeah. the fullback fumble the ball. No. I'm like, why do you give it to a ball? Right. The guy that's not used to handling so, the ball. So obviously, it would be, quote, unquote, safer for Tom just to turn the hand to Sony Michelle or Brandon Bolden, right. let them crash in there. But but Tom's saying, no, the safest play strategically is for me just to take the ball from under center and just, and just duck go underneath, forward, go right? Forward. And I okay. thought this this was a safe play. This was just a freak accident. Peyton Manning, what did you what didn't you see Peyton Manning run the last four years of his career? I don't know. The quarterback sneak. sneak. Why? Because of the neck injury. You say it's a low impact play. You know why? Because you don't put him in for un unnecessary risk. He's playing quarterback. He can get hit in the back. Okay. He can get hit at any point in time. Okay. There's risk on the football field. But what don't you do? You don't subject him to unnecessary risk. Because okay. it nearly but, ended his but, but career. But I seem to say, he had, yeah. a, he had a career ending injury. I must a neck Let injury. Let me ask you a question. So if he gets hit in the back, that can almost end his career? What do you mean? If he drops back the pass and somebody hits him in the back, I can't almost end his career. Yes, dropping back is different from going forward. I'm, I'm, I'm on the line of scrimmage. I'm going forward. What you I say got, it's low impact? It is low impact. Okay, so but, what's the problem? But, but if you already have, a, say, an injury like a neck injury, a neck an injury, injury. I still, you know, I, I still, I still say the same thing. It's a low impact play. It's a choice. It's a choice you want to make. If the quarterback say, look, we'll use Peyton Manning. I don't like the quarterback sneak. He might not like it. Right. You never saw Peyton do a lot of no. quarterbacks. That was not his play. I but, mean, it just wasn't. Well, he actually, his dad believed he, or Tony Dungeon believed he got injured on the quarterback sneak in Washington. He ran really? the quarterback sneak. It opened up, and the guy caught him just like, he caught him. Okay. Mm. And, Maybe. and, 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 and bent his neck back. That's the but, first I've heard. But, okay. Skip, I don't believe Pat Mahomes, even though he won the MVP, Skip, he's still young. Tom Brady has more say now, even though he won the, MVP, mm. uh, won the Super Bowl his second year. Skip, he did he still wasn't the Tom Brady that we see now in his second year. 
He still, you, ED. I did. As you, as you when, when you see something for 20 years, yeah, you know, it's a little different. And you, year eight, ED was different than year two ED, yeah. even though you broke the rushing record. Yeah. You was a little different. You're like, hey, no, I ain't doing I, that. I, ain't gonna take that. I, I don't want to take that here. You know, but think about it. And depending the running back position, I can think about we played the New Orleans Saints, and I had like 155 or 60 yards. And I'm like, and John wanted to tell I said, man, no, leave me in. He said, no, no, I'll take you out. So I, I went in for one play. He let me, he said, I'm going to let you play one more play, see what happens. And I kind of got twisted up. Oh, no, that's it. Come on, come on, come on. But, but I still believe that it could happen. It's just a freak accident. Okay, this I mean, is how freaky knee dislocations are. Poor Teddy Bridgewater suffered one in practice mm -hmm. on August 30th of 2016, and it was non-contact. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any video because it was at practice. Mm -hmm. But he just stepped wrong, right. planted and stepped wrong. And the patella goes, the, the, they call it patella dislocation. So the knee just flies out of socket, you know, mm -hmm. basically. And guess what? Everything else flew sideways, too, mm -hmm. because he had an ACL rupture and all kinds of structural damage to his knee that nearly ended his career. Right. So now we got to wait on the MRI to make sure nothing else went awry. Right. Because sometimes my guy Byron Jones of the Cowboys, he just pops his back in and keeps yeah. playing. Yeah. But he's like double jointed almost. So I don't know. I, it didn't look that bad right. after the game. So we're hoping it's not that bad. I've never dislocated a knee, but I dislocated my elbow. Yep. It's painful. Because it, it, sure. it bent up the other way. You know, like I bent my arm like this, but it bent up the other way. No good. <laughs> We're going to leave it there, guys. Great stuff. That MRI happening uh, sometime soon uh, this morning. So we'll let you know if that predicted three week timetable for Patrick Mahomes' return is correct. <laughs> No mercy. The Cowboys host the Eagles Sunday night. Both teams now sit atop the NFC East with three and three records. Ezekiel Elliott said the game is going to be a, quote, dogfight. Both teams coming off losses, but the Cowboys have actually dropped three consecutively. Eric, who wins Sunday night? How about them Cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first, let's start off with the Eagles. The Eagles are a team that, that play very well against the run. Uh, they give up a lot of big plays in the second. The secondary is pretty decimated. Um, the Dallas Cowboys are at home. They've lost three in a row. I think the Dallas Cowboys are the better football team. I think they have more talent uh, defensively. I think they have a lot of weapons offensively. I think with Amari Cooper not playing, um, Randall Carr possibly not playing, and I'm saying uh, I'm, I'm saying I'm saying Amari Cooper's uh, not. He might not play. He's not yeah, sure if he's going to play. I don't think Randall Cobb's going to play. But go yeah, ahead. I, I, I say he's, he's yeah. not going to play either. What the Cowboys need to do is, when I think about the Dallas Cowboys, let's go back to year one when Zeke and Dak came at the same time. Run the football. That's what they need to do. Run the football. Don't be fans. And I saw the game last week when they played the Jets. To me, Zeke looked like Zeke. Zeke made some, some really tough runs, some, some, some really good catches, some good routes. So to me, in this football game, I know Dallas has lost three in a row, but I don't see them losing at home against the Eagles. Um, to, to me, the Eagles are really a battle test. The Eagles be like, hey, we lose, fine. We got to get them in. We'll get them in, in, in Philly next time. But I think the Dallas Cowboys win this football game. Wait, wait a second. I Eric know. Dickerson just picked the Dallas hey, Cowboys? I, I got to call like us. You think I want to pick the Cowboys? You think Whoa. I want to pick the yeah. Cowboys? Well, I don't you, want to. You're a secret, you're a secret Cowboys fan. Come on. Texas. <laughs> you know, I've always said that. <laughs> I, mean, I got to call like I see it. I, Sealy, I don't want Sealy to. See right down the road from Dallas, ain't it? Yeah. It's what? Like, no, see no, right down no, the, it's just right from Houston. 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 But you ain't never liked the Oilers, though. I did like I like Earl Campbell. I'm taking the Eagles. Both Both teams have injury issues. Um, both teams' defenses have not lived up to expectations. I thought Philly's defense would be a lot better. I think everybody thought the Cowboys' defense would be better considering how well they played last year. Uh, I thought they had the best combo of linebackers with Jalen Smith and, uh, and Vander Esch uh, tackling Dutchman. I thought they had the two best middle linebackers in football. Uh, defensive line with D-Law and then they, the addition of Robert Quinn. I'm like, man, they're going to be something special. They had Byron Jones in the second day who Finally found a position, because I thought they played him out of position. He had him at safety, yep. strong and free, they moved in the corner, and he found the home, made the Pro Bowl. So <clears throat> I think that defense has not played up to, it, to expectations. Offensively, they've been good the first three weeks, but they played no one. Is that what I try to tell you? I, I agree I, with that. Yeah, they played nobody. <laughs> I agree with oh, that. my quarterback, my quarterback. Ooh, quarterback rating. I love my quarterback. QBR through the roof. Can't even measure quarterback <laughs> rating, so I can't measure it. Well, it's number one in pro football. It won't be after this week. Okay. It won't be after this week. Uh, you, got, like that. you got a three-game start. Yeah, after this week, in the two. Um, 
the question is, I, I, the, the, for me, I believe this game going to come down to turnovers. All turnovers are not created equal. When you turn the ball over, where you turn the ball over at matters. I believe the Eagles will coax one turnover, at least one out of Dak, late in the ball game, and that will be the difference in the ball game. I believe it's going to be a lot of points scored, but I be, believe it'll be close. I'm going to take the Eagles 30-27 over the mm. Cowboys at home. Mm. So what gives me heart is that this Hall of Famer picked my team you bad and luck. <laughs> what also gives me heart is that the Rambassadors team is all, also reeling. It's lost three straight games. Like and I still think it's a pretty good team. I, I think it could be a very good team. Although your team just said, okay, we've seen enough. Let's go get Jalen Ramsey. Yeah. Okay? My team just says, man, we just keep doing what we yeah. do. Right? We, we just say, yeah, go keep <laughs> clapping. Ain't <laughs> <laughs> hey, nobody shaking hands. They won't go to feel they only shake the fourth hand. <laughs> but what gives me heart is the, the Rams lost at home to Jameis Winston, 55 to 40. I lost, it, I lost in New York. Okay, I got it, but I'm, I'm trying to put this in perspective. And you just got cleaned out at home by your division rival, right? 49 is a good team. 27, they're a very good team. I agree. But it looked like a mismatch. It, d- it just looks like what they do best, you do worst, I, right? I agree with that. Are we talking about the Rams? Okay, well, I'm just trying to keep this in perspective okay. because – my team, my offense is ranked first in pro football focus. Yours is ranked 20th. So, so again, I appreciate this because you're acknowledging that, that we still have some firepower there that has not manifested itself. Yeah, so that should make you okay? disappointed. Okay, it doesn't make me disappointed. It horrifies me because <laughs> in the end, the reason it's hard for me to dredge up any real emotion about this game, any true faith in my team, is because they have shown me next to nothing. Mm-hmm. They beat three nobodies. You can, I'll give you that. And then they lost three straight games, and in the last two, they fell behind 31-3 to at home and 21-3 to to a team that had lost all four of its games mm-hmm. at the Jets. Mm-hmm. Those are really bad signs. Really you can bad. say that the Jameis game was a really bad sign for mm-hmm. your team, but, but there's something wrong because the truth is both of our teams have fallen backward across that fine line between winning and losing in the National Football League. Yep. And I, I even think your team, I test better than my team because my team has looked lifeless on defense the last three weeks. Especially the first um, half. Not, not three, two weeks, but, but they have looked without energy, w- without motivation, w- without any urgency. They look like deadheaded. They, they look like they don't even show up. And so it's hard to say, oh, just go flip the switch because here come the Eagles. Have you, yeah. have you not seen your offense in the first three, the last three weeks? You got nine points in the yeah. first half. Nine. Okay, okay. But, but again, that won't lose the game. If you fall behind 31-3, to three, it's hard for it's my hard to quarterback to throw that, well, well, throw me. you out of a hole. But you got to score. Okay. Y'all but, scored nine points in three okay. games in the well, first half. I told half. you, he threw a really nice pass to Amari Cooper and it hit him right here and he muffed it right into an interception. Stop saying he hit it right the game. Stop saying he hit it right there. He hit it right here like he's here. Okay, so I I keep telling Shannon, I loved my defense coming into the year. (laughs) Not one player on my entire defense has lived up to my expectation. Not one where I say, well, at least he's a bright spot. Demarcus Lawrence got $100 million in the offseason, and now I call him Marcus Lawrence because there's no D over there, (laughs) right? There's none. Yeah. He just he just disappears. I guess we could call him D as in disappearing, Lawrence, right? Well, he had, didn't he have uh, shoulder surgery? Or yeah, he did. And he's had knick-knack injuries, but I'm not going to use that as an excuse. Oh. So, to your point, you know, again, decimation. I got, I've got i lost two corners who are not going to play in this game, and I don't even care because they've been so bad back there anyway. Well, I didn't do anything. Well, they didn't do it no way, but <laughs> the big thing is y'all getting your offensive tackles back. you getting your offensive tackles back. I think. They might. And I'm not well, sure about I'm bullying that. them. Yeah. I'm a bull on the first time. Well, if they can hold up, I'm a run by the they age. don't get them back. The, the way that they that they ran the football last week against the Jets, and the Jets, you know, they played some good defense. Um, you know, I, I, I say this, and the Cowboys, to me, have always been a running football team. But when you fall behind... Okay, I got it. But look, you, you say, the recipe is just hand it to 21 well, and well, let no, it you be. you always said that. That, that, that okay, was your thing. Okay, okay, look, the point is, 
the Eagles are number one against the run. So you're going to say, that. let's fix it. <laughs> let's give it say. to 21 40 times. But, let's go Eric Dickerson on. No, 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 right? no, 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 Skip. You can't, but you got, but Skip, you got to have some balance because Dak works best off the play action. He still throws a very high completion percentage and he gets a lot of his touchdowns okay, off so play help action. Me out. If there's no Amari and no Randall well, Cobb, you, you it's in, highly possible. You're, you're in trouble. Okay, you're you going to Gallup shape. and who? Like, like, well, let me ask you. So, so, do you think the Cowboys are gonna win or lose? Win, are, they, are they gonna win or lose? I, I'm, I'm gonna take the Cowboys. Right. 27, so 24. He took them. You know, okay. 27, 24 okay. Cowboys. I, I'm just hanging in with my quarterback because my quarterback's been really good. He's been the lone bright spot, no matter what he says. No, he ain't. He well, is, I mean, the first three games, he was like, I, but I, what did we tell him? They played the Giants, the Redskins, and the Dolphins. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I could have went out there and looked pretty good in some of them games. I got, I, I'd have got at least two touchdowns. I might not have thrown seven like he did, but I'd have got two. My quarterback nearly threw them out of two of the deepest holes you'll ever find yourself in. Well, you know, that's almost. But, but it was close. And he threw for, like, the, the staggering yards he threw for against a really good. Okay, Go it's 323 in the second half. <laughs> It's outrageous yards to throw against that secondary and that pass rush because they're really good in Green Bay. They're can, way better. Eddie, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Okay. I know you, can, I know you can't swim. Mm -hmm. I throw your butt overboard. Then I can, and, oh, famous. Then I come rescue you. What have I done? He threw him in the hole. I'm he's, about, he's talking about Dak almost brought him back out of a hole. He threw him in the hole. He didn't throw him in yeah, the he hole. Did. He, he threw did two picks. Not. Two picks per half. He picks. deserved one. Now he deserved both of them. He got them. How did it go on the stats? It's a pick. It, okay, it so it goes in the pick. pick. Okay, right. so what am I hanging on to for dear life? Cowboy the love. Eagles haven't exactly set the world on they fire either, have not. They? They because go. they lost at home to Detroit. No real shame, but they lost at home. And then they went to Atlanta, and they should have won the game, but they should have been way ahead of Atlanta because Atlanta is no good. Their defense is okay? awesome. And, and then this past Sunday, they let Kirk Cousins annihilate and humiliate them. That's a bad sign. It should have been 41 points. It was 38 points that they scored. It was 38 to 20. They're coming off that thumping up in Minneapolis, Skip, that embarrassment. Did you see who was AFC Offensive Player of the Week? Sam Darnold, mm. courtesy of you okay, guys. fine. So 50-50. We're yeah. both awful, right? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, okay D. Right, so, so here comes one awful against my awful, okay. and at least it's at Jerry World, oh, yeah. and at least your awful's coach, Dougie Prediction. Yeah. Dougie Prediction guaranteed we're going to go down there and win the football game. That ain't what he meant. So, you know what, Skip? You always made me want to change my pick. You about, you about to talk me out of my pick. I'm, <laughs> I'm just seriously. saying. I'm, you, I'm, I'm always want to go with Shannon. If, if my team has any pride, their manhood got called out by the, the rival coach. They beat this team twice last year. My quarterback, the last time they played in the fourth quarter in overtime, threw for 243 yards and three touchdowns, and they won that game. They did come back to yeah, win. Back win. So he's going to play with a lot of confidence. I don't think my team as a whole has a lot of confidence right now. So maybe Dougie prediction, maybe he lit a new little fire the way my coach can never light a pregame fire. Fire. Coach Clapp, Jason Garrett. Get him so, so maybe that will put us over the top, and that's all I got to hang on to right now. So Let's I'm I'm going to go Dallas. I'm going to go 24 to 23 on a Brett Maher walk off field, field goal. goal. Okay. Thanks to Dak leading them on an eight play, 65 yard drive to set it up. Fletcher Cog, yep. Brandon Graham. This is a must. I think this is a must win for the Cowboys because now they'll be if they lose four games at home. I mean, this be. Okay, just roll. remember, they did fall to 3-5 three and five last year. They're 3-3 three and three right now, and they won the division won a playoff game. So will all be lost? No. But last year it was up and down, up and down, up and down. This year is just going straight downhill, and if you lose well, no, four in a row. It started off up. You know? it, started, it started straight no, up. No, but I all mean, of a sudden, what's the new trend? But, no, but see, Skip, but the thing is, what's going to hurt this year is that after that first win, Kadak looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> now, Super Bowl. Oh. We're going to be there. Oh, he was bragging. We're going to be there and see my cowboy. Uh, wait, you did, do you, you have did some say fear that. that my team's going to win? Win what? Sunday night. Y'all ain't winning nothing. Well, you're, you're sort of laying out your no, no, excuse no. for I said, no, I'm saying this is what hurts because you got your hopes up so high after uh, the first, first three oh, weeks. Oh, after the first three yeah. weeks. Yeah. Well, what if my hopes are back up high on Monday morning? They won't be. Huh? I got some, okay. some special. I'm, I'm, you got some special. I got some special for you. I'm going with the Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's hard to say, but I'm still going with them. Yeah. I, I got some special well, for you on Monday. I, 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 I've been the first to admit, he well could be right about this game. 
He could be right. You about to talk? Should I hey, go with you? Do you want to change? No, I don't. I'm no, gonna, no, no, stay with him. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay with the guy. Because you're you're actually making me nervous. You're making but, me nervous. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, oh. Injuries will certainly play a big point yeah. to oh. your your point, Ed. Ty Smith and Lyle Collins uh, practiced it in a limited capacity yesterday. We'll see where they are today. Mm. And then Jalen Mills for the Eagles, the yeah, Green Goblin. Big, mm. He's hoping to come back. Yeah. We'll see what his progress is Warner. after Warner. practice now, today. Have, have you seen? Did you see Green Bay? They was targeting him. Mm. He's yeah. gonna be number one corner. They mm. picking on him. Mm. Hey, baby, go, go with the best one. <laughs> make, make everybody else scared. Eric, thanks for being here. We <laughs> really you. appreciate it. Hope you have a great weekend. No mercy. Giants hosting the Cardinals. It'll be a battle of the rookie signal callers between Kyler Murray and Daniel Jones. Both QBs have two wins this season as starters. Danny Dimes had an impressive 18-point comeback in his first start, while Kyler is top 10 in the league for passing yards on the season. So, Shannon, which one of these QBs you think will be the best long term? Both quarterbacks have shown flashes, Skip. Um, one has prototypical size. The other is a really small man. Yep. Daniel Jones has a very good arm. He's accurate, um, which is very important because he's going to play a lot, most of his games outside. In the um, middle, out of MetLife now. Yep. Yep. Washington's outside. Philly's mm-hmm. outside. Obviously, plays the Cowboys mm-hmm. in that division. NFC East, that's indoors. So the majority of his games in his career will be played outdoors. So you need a decent arm to deal with those elements. I like that. Um, <clears throat> he's a better athlete than I thought. I didn't think he had this kind of mobility. Didn't know a whole lot about him, but I did, I did watch him a few games at Duke, and he didn't show this kind of mobility, this nope. kind of athleticism. He did not. But watching him against Tampa and watching him in some of the other games, he had has above average athleticism. The other guy, Kyler, is 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 <laughs> athleticism is something that we don't even need to discuss with him because obviously get drafted in the first round in baseball, you're the number one overall pick in football. Athleticism should never be called into question. Very good arm. Um, what we're starting to see is that he's starting to run more when the play breaks down and he's getting protected better. Last two games, he's only been sacked once previous four games he was sacked 20 times that was far too many they're doing a better job of protecting him he's doing a better job of getting out of harm's way but but for for me skip i'm gonna take daniel jones because i believe he has i think i just i'm gonna trust the giants uh in their hierarchy to put the pieces got great piece already saquon evan ingram which is better, I believe uh, uh, saquon is better back than david johnson and there's i don't think they have even though fitz is is a more accomplished player than Evan Ingram. Excuse me, Fitz is 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 yeah. probably a year away from. He's yeah, probably going to hang it up after this year. Yep. So I like some of the pieces they already have. Mm-hmm. Just add some more pieces. Both offensive lines lead, needs leads a a, a lot, lot to, to be do. desired. They do. So Skip, I'm going to take J- Daniel Jones for one reason. Skip, he's more prototypical. Um, he's made some rookie mistakes because. Sometimes I think when I watch him, he leaves the huddle. He's already predetermined. I'm throwing the ball here. I'm throwing the ball there. And I think in college, Skip, you know, they tell you, throw the ball such and such. And the guy's going to be open for the most part. Mm -hmm. You can diagram plays. He's going to be open. But in the NFL, they will force you to read the coverage before you decide where you want to throw the football. So I'm going to take him. He's more prototypical. And I believe he'll be less apt to get injury. Kyle is just a small man. And I think he's more susceptible to risk, injury, the injury risk than um, Daniel Mm. Jones. That's the only reason. Give me Kyler Murray okay. for the long haul. I am 1,000% sold on Kyler. I'm impressed with Daniel Jones. I'm with you. I did not see this. <laughs> but give me Kyler times 10 going forward. We've seen flashes from Danny Dimes. Mm-hmm. He even has a new Big Apple nickname. Danny Dimes. Huh? And it's a good one. But I don't think he'll ever be able to live up to it the way Kyler will live up to it. He doesn't need a nickname because he's just a one-name <laughs> Kyler. <laughs> yeah. Murray will be forgotten yes. pretty quickly. He's just Kyler. Yep. I want to watch Kyler. I do. He's must-see TV to me. So let's go back to what you said about Daniel Jones. Not really recruited out of high school. No. Didn't even get ranked by any national scouting service at the bottom of the list. He didn't even make the <laughs> list. So, again... There's overachieving going on there. He initially signed with Princeton, then Duke sort of let him walk on, but gave him pretty soon a scholarship. But, right. but he came out of nowhere. Yeah. Kyler Murray won every game he started as a quarterback playing Texas high school state football. He won every game and every championship. It doesn't get any better than that. So I give you the measurables on Daniel Jones. And they did, Gettleman and Shermer, they, they saw through – 
all the, the hype around the other quarterbacks, and they said, look at the measurables of this kid. Mm-hmm. Because at the combine, he measures 6'5", Peyton's height, right? Yep. And 221, pretty good size. And he ran 4'8". That's great. Okay, that's a pretty yeah. good yeah. combination. 40, 4'8", will get it, man. And, he, and he'll fill out. He'll be somewhere yeah. around 235, I would 240. Think so. I would think so. Yeah. Kyler, uh, as we all know, barely measured 5'10 at the combine. He is stoutly built. Yeah. 207 yeah. he yeah. weighed. So he's got a little bit of he's little, got a little girth stature. A yeah. little bit. So I think he will be able to take the punishment. And I kept telling you after watching him only for the one year at Oklahoma, because mm-hmm. I'm a fan, I never saw him in harm's way. Mm-hmm. He always managed to stay just beyond harm's reach right. where he would either get down or spin out of what could be career-threatening sort of hit. Mm-hmm. And in the NFL so far, I haven't seen a career-threatening hit yet. Right. When he goes down on a sack, he just kind of folds up and goes right. down, and yeah. they never seem to get that big shot get, on get him. Get the right? fall on top of him. They yeah. just touch him down. And he kind of reminds me already of the way Emmett Smith ran. He just had that, that radar of you can't get a big shot on me because mm-hmm. I'm going to duck and dart and, and sink over here and slide a hand over here mm-hmm. a little bit where you won't ever tag me with a right. big shot. And that's what this kid has. So Kyler Murray at, at Oklahoma showed me lightning release and lightning feet. And that's a lightning combination, yep. man, because I told you, it's the quickest feet I've seen on a football field since Barry Sanders. Right. Not saying he's Barry Sanders' a runner, but it's going to get you out of harm's way right. a lot of times. And he's just now figuring out how to use the speed downfield. Right where he'll take off occasionally, they'll call a play occasionally, and they haven't begun to, to really start to mine what could be that read option right. play with David Johnson. Well, you don't, you, don't, you don't want to really skip this early. You don't want yep. to take him that kind of punishment. But he's learning, like, you know, there will be a time that I'll be able to transition and I can be Brady yep. or I can be Drew Brees. Yep. But right now I need to lie, rely on my athleticism. Um, you know, Skip, I think sometimes when we evaluate you and I, we just look yep. at the guy like, what did he do there? But I think sometimes talent evaluators, they look at Daniel Jones, they're like, you know what? He was at Duke. Now, Duke's known for basketball. You know one thing, if you can't succeed at Duke, Mm -hmm. at basketball, you're not very good. But in Duke football, they're not getting top-tier talent like Alabama, Ohio State. But the coach is known, David Cutcliffe, as a quarterback maker. So they say, you know what? He's fundamentally sound. David Cutcliffe, Mm -hmm. Eli, Peyton, fundamentally sound. How good could he be if we gave him some talent? Okay. Saquon, he got an Evan Ingram. If we give him enough, you know, they took Odell away. Odell's in Cleveland. If we can find him a number one receiver, mm-hmm. short of this offensive line, how good could this guy be? Okay. So if if you're right about this organization is way better than that organization, you'll you'll get me long term. I, tr- I, tr- I trust okay. the Jazz more than I do. All right. But in the end, when I watch Daniel Jones play, he still has that overachiever intangible in him where, where I see that crazy look in his eye occasionally mm-hmm. where – He doesn't completely trust himself. Mm -hmm. Kyler has supreme, it's like that athletic arrogance in a good way, where he just walks on the field with his chest out like, I got this. I'm the best. Yeah. But you know what, Skip? Both of them guys have their work cut out for them. You know why? Look at the division they're in. Mm -hmm. One has Dak, one has walk it to them. Young quarterbacks, NFC East, Daniel Jones in the NFC East. Mm -hmm. Look at the NFC West. Just loaded. (laughs) San Francisco's not going anywhere anytime soon. Russell Wilson's not going anywhere anytime soon. The Rams are not going anywhere anytime soon. So both of these guys got their work cut out for them. Mm. Well, they face each other (laughs) this Sunday at Giants. And you have... I'm taking Kyler. Kyler? Oh. <laughs> After all that, you're taking Kyler Murray? Aha! Uh-huh. I sure am. I think your argument just got exposed. I sure, I sure am. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, I'll do the same. I'm going to go 28-24 <laughs> visiting Arizona with Kyler as the star of the I got 2017. Okay. I got 2017. 17. Yeah. Thank you. No mercy. NFL.com has released their quarterback index for week seven. Russell Wilson overtakes Patrick Mahomes for the top spot. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Tom Brady, he dropped three spots down mm. to number six mm. overall on the list. Mm. The index did admit that Brady is likely to shine in prime time against the Jets on Monday. Shannon, is Brady ranked too low, too high, or would you say just right? Uh, mm. Hello. I know this man did not drop three spots after the game in which Skip Bayless gave him an A-plus and Coach Belichick gave him the game ball. A-minus. <laughs> oh, Shea. Now, Shea Wait, gave... Shea gave him an F. 
they dropped him three spots. Yep. So they gave him an F2. Mm, okay. oh, Maybe yo. they're watching Undisputed. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Yeah. I got him just right. I've been saying this all along, Skip. Yep. Let's see, mm. every time you, you grade or you critique or you analyze Tom Brady, he got six Super Bowls. He got four MVP. Got him. Not what they're doing. Can't take that away from him. Uh-huh. We grading him now. Yep. It's called most like, I remember this guy got all A's when he was in elementary. Well, he mm-hmm. in high school now, so we grading him right now. What he yep. doing? Mm-hmm. Well, he getting B's and C's. Mm-hmm. Skip, look. <clears throat> they wish he'd have been all alone. Skip, he's still valuable. He's still a great player, great quarterback. But when I watch, I don't see the consistency in which we're used to seeing from Tom Brady. Um, he doesn't want to get hit. He's flinching more. We started to see it a little bit last year. I see it really more this year. Tom Brady has played one real defense, one. And that was Buffalo. He was 18 of 39, 150 yards, zero touchdown, and one interception. And you say, well, Buffalo got a great defense. They do that to every quarterback. Huh, funny, because I stayed up late last night. Mm. I stayed up late last night. Tom Brady has the worst completion percentage and the fewest passing yards of any quarterback against Buffalo's defense. Mm. The great Tom Brady. Mm. That's why I say you Mm. judge a guy every single time he touched the field, not based on what he's done in the past, Skip Bayless. Mm. Tom Brady right now, he's 15th in completion percentage. Case Keenum is in front of him. Joe Flacco is in front of him. Did anybody see Joe Flacco last night? (laughs) Well, Joe Flacco last night has a better completion percentage than Tom Brady. First Cousins, the guy, uh, what do you call him? He's a... An uh, underconfident overachiever. I called him that. That guy has a better completion percentage than Tom Brady. He's 21st in yards per attempt. He's behind guys like Josh Rosen, who just got sent to the bench. Guy like Baker Mayfield. What? Mm. What? Mm. And the guy that Skip Bayless gave an A minus and Coach Belichick gave the game ball to. Mm. The Patriots are winning games because of that defense. You know that. I know that. Mm. That's not to disparage Tom Brady, but Tom Brady game in and game out is not a not playing at the elite level that we're used to. Is he a great quarterback? Yes. But is he playing like Russ? Is he playing like my homeboy? Is he playing like Deshaun? No, he is not. And there's no other way around that, Skip Bayless. Mm. So, Shannon Sharp concludes, Tom Brady is in decline. <laughs> Am I right? Isn't that what you just made the case I, for? I, I said that. I've been saying in that. In decline. I've been saying that. Well, well, he's not every guy. year you predict this is his final year, and you've is been it? wrong for three is straight it? years. Is it? That's okay. Is it? Is it? Yeah, this is going to be it, says Shannon yeah. Sharp. Yep. So, just for a little perspective. Give it to me. The list in question here. Oh, it's question. NFL.com. Oh, okay. <laughs> NFL.com. And it is put together by four editors at NFL.com. N- no offense to those editors, but they're just four guys who just say, wonder what we think. I don't know. Are they Eagle fans or Cowboy fans or <laughs> Buffalo fans? I oh, don't know. Oh, this list in question. Well, you thought I, you were sleek with what you said. You're real good with the words, yeah. Skip Bayless. So I will conclude that Tom Brady is a little low, that, that this is a little bit off because he just fell three spots off a game in which he went 31 of 41 on Thursday night mm-hmm. football, 31 of 41 mm-hmm. for 334 yards. Mm-hmm. He was throwing to Gunnar Osheski and Jacoby Myers mm-hmm. and Ryan Izzo, and all of a sudden, my old saying came true right before your very eyes mm-hmm. that Tom Brady could go out before kickoff and just say, hey, you, you three guys up in the stands from Dorchester, you three, come on down here. I'm going to throw to you tonight and we're going to win this game. Well, he was basically throwing to three guys from Dorchester, two of them undrafted free agent rookies, won a seventh round pick two years ago. And he got that done, 31 of 41, in 40-mile-an-hour wind gusts in Foxborough? Are you kidding me? He fell three spots off that game? Well, tell him about that pick. Tell him about that pick and that that, 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 uh, strip sack scoop and score that he he, gave up. He threw a pick that was windblown sideways. I don't even know what happened to it. The wind was so strong, it just went sideways. He threw it down the field, and it wound up out of bounds almost, and they picked it off. Skip, the thing that that, that made Tom Brady great was not only that he won, 
it was that he won with throwing to guys that were undrafted, mm. throwing to the Gunners, throwing mm. to the Julian Edelmans, throwing to the Chris Hogans. Mm. That's what made him because you wouldn't, people wouldn't heap that praise if he's throwing to Julio, mm. AB on a nightly ba- uh, mm. top tier guys. What made Tom that set him aside mm-hmm. was because he really never had, with the exception of Randy Moss, mm-hmm. which he didn't win with, but he's never really had a top tier receiver. Now, Gronk, is, is a different animal, but he plays the tight end Agreed. position. So we get where we, we're going here. So Gronk now works for Fox. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you. But so in other words, I can't let you use that he's throwing to the guys from Dorchester oh. because he's been throwing to the guys from oh. Dorchester. Well, this, 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 whole this was truly three guys from Dorchester. <laughs> I think maybe they did come from Dorchester, all three of them. So we're talking about four guys from NFL.com yeah. for editors who just say, ah, we'll no, no, that's get, no, no, that's get. So if we go over to Pro Football Focus, which actually uses metrics and second-level analytics Where to rank their quarterbacks, Brady's fourth, so that's what I told you. He's, he shouldn't have dropped it all. He's fourth. Of course, Dak is third, so that's, that's correct. Uh-huh. But I'm going to give you this. Wentz is second. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that on the Pro Football Focus quarterback rankings. I'm going to give you that because – these have some serious sort of strategic validity where they're actually looking at all the metrics and they got a that's whole system in place, right? That's what I do. Do you? you look, look at all the metrics? the metrics. I look at all, the, all that. <laughs> do you really? Yep. Okay. Well, uh, uh, if you don't mind me asking so. uh, uh, on that one, the one we're talking about, where is Dak on the one that you and I are talking about currently? He's 11th on the Pro Football Focus. No, 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 no. no, no uh, I mean on the uh, NFL.com, sorry. Uh, yeah, he's 11th. 11th. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. What, what, my home, what, what, my, what walking to him? What, what my guy? Wentz. I don't find him on here. Oh, you I find him. Find you him. Did, you I, I, find oh, him. he's up here at five. Yeah, okay. way up yeah. there. Yeah. You, you I, see, I, yeah. I went right yeah, over the top yeah. of him because yeah. I fixated on yeah. number six is Tom Brady, right? So you want to know my takeaway from this whole discussion? <laughs> Come January, I will give you all these lists. You can have all of them because I'll take number 12 in Foxborough in January and I'll beat you every single time. Well, then, Skip. The guy who's in decline, the guy who's almost finished, he will beat you every time in any playoff game at home, probably on the road because he went to Mahomes' home last AFC Championship I mean, game and beat him in overtime. I mean, Skip, that's how I was, Skip. Yeah. I mean, I really didn't do good, but when it came to the final exam, mm. teacher say, you t- hey, you pass this final exam, you pass the class. Really? Boom. So oh. he might be might not get passing grades right now, okay. and he might do well on the final exam. Yep. That don't mean he didn't do well. That didn't mean he didn't do good in the class. Huh. So you're admitting that you fear him in January? I fear the Patriots. I fear Coach Belichick. Really? Yeah, I fear uh, that genius, that well, mastermind. It's, it's a quarterback's game. And it's a quarter, they got it's, the it's, best one. No, 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 no. Mm. Coach Belichick. Mm. So I'm tired of you doing that. I'm tired of you and a lot of other people trying to minimize what Coach Belichick's mm. impact is on this team. I give him 25% of the No, credit. I give him 75. Yeah, okay. Mm. Obviously, it's a quarterback's game. Oh, uh, it's a coach's game. Who, you know who picked the quarterback? Tom, Tom Brady who is, is so in decline that I'm going to give him a pretty good shot to win all 16 games this year. And I don't know how. I don't know how he does it with mirrors. Yeah, with a defense. He does it with three with, guys from Dorchester. With a defense that's giving up 50 points in six mm. games. Okay. I know how he's doing it. Mm. Yeah. What, so, let me ask you a question. Mm. If Russell Wilson's on that team, they, are they 5-1, and 4-2, and two, or 6-0? and oh? I would think they'd be six and zero because he's, he's my MVP at this Thank point. You. Thank okay. you. Making my Boy, point. That's, that's, Thank you. That was a. You went way out on the limb for that one because no, my point Russell is Russell Wilson's no, really good. No, 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 no. But you're making it seem like Tom Brady is the reason they're six and zero. So Deshaun or my homeboy. Hey, if if Dak were the quarterback of the New England Patriots right now, they would be six and zero. Okay, then. So what we talking? Really about? played any? So, so okay, then. Yeah. You're making my point. Oh no, I think not. <laughs> I think I got Tom Brady in January because I picked them to win it all, and I'm feeling real good about my pick. Well, I ain't feeling good because my guy going to be out for a little okay, while. We'll see. Thanks to Andy. Red, Big Red messed Big me red. up. And predicting perfection. Waiting on the results of that MRI from this morning. No mercy. Cowboys lost their third game in a row last week, and Dak Prescott has only two touchdowns compared to four interceptions in those losses. However... The Cowboys QB has not lost any confidence from this three-game skid. Ahead of this rivalry game against the Eagles Sunday night, Dak said, quote, I know we have a great team. I know it. Shannon, do you like that he said this? Hell no. Hmm. I mean, see, we, we, we've, we've thrown that word around. We've used it so much. We've diluted it of its true meaning. Great means you have accomplished something. You've done something. You've won something. What the hell has this team won that he would say is great? They won a Super Bowl. The Patriots can say, you know, we, we got a great team. 
What did they want, Skip? Mm. What did, as player, the individual player can say, yeah, that's it. I could say J.J. Watt's a great player. He's defensive player of the year. Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald are great players. But how does he get to say, you know what's happened, Skip? He's smelling themselves. I'm on Dallas Cowboys. I'm on America's team. And we're great just because I'm here. Huh? You won nothing. Hmm. The word great has been diluted so much in American sports that it doesn't even have the same meaning anymore because we toss it around. Oh, he great. Oh, they're great. They got a great team. No, they don't. They won Jack. Hmm. And they need to stop using this word. The Cowboys have won Jack. Dak has won Jack. What? Where are they great? What's great about the Cowboys? Other than they're the Dallas Cowboys, the most marketable, the most recognizable uh, sports franchise in all the world. Hmm. That's the only thing that's great about them. But this team isn't great because they won nothing. They've done nothing. They've accomplished nothing. And this is ridiculous that he would say that. Hmm. So to use your magic word, what the hell is he supposed to say no. yesterday after they've lost three in a row? We're overrated? No. We suck? What, what do you want him to say? I don't want him to say great. Don't use great. Keep that out your mouth because you're not great. If you're, oh. Great teams don't lose three in a row. You know, they are a potentially great team. We'll say that. Okay. But he, he can't on the eve of the most important game of the year, a make or break, sink or swim, north or south game, you, you can't send a message to the locker room that we haven't lived up to our potential because you got to tell everybody, I still believe in this team, that we can be great because we've been great in certain games. Well, great. At the end of the year last year, they held Drew Brees to 127 yards passing and a QBR of 15 on a scale of 0 to 100 mm -hmm. and 10 points and beat them 13 to 10. That's late in the year last year. Seattle came in with the number one rushing attack in all of pro football, and they grand totaled 74 yards rushing in that game in the, in the playoffs against Dallas. Mm -hmm. Those are two great flashes of brilliance games. They're great. They showed you potential. Guess what? My Dallas Cowboys last year tied for the most Pro Bowl players with eight. They had eight Pro Bowlers you last year. You gotta be ashamed year. of yourself if they okay. did what? Skip, greatness means, Skip, for people at home, the 86 Bears defense was actually better than the 85 Bears defense. But why did the 85 Bears get so much credit, Skip? What did they do? They finished it off. If the 2000 Ravens, which, uh, uh, only allowed 165 total points. Had they not won the Super Bowl, they'd have been gone. Nothing. Mm -hmm. The 02 Bucks, the 14 C uh, Seahawks. Skip, in order for you to be great, you got to win something. Okay, so they won a playoff game. And he didn't finish the sentence of, we have a great team, but we haven't played great this year. No, no, no. That, the, you but, no but you can't say that you on the no eve of a game against Philly, okay, a showdown. Okay, look. look. All this, we can do all the talking we want to. We just need to get back. We just need to go out there and play better football. Don't even mention great, because ain't nothing about what you've done this year has okay. been great. Okay, when, when you are in a dire circumstance, I would never the end face that. of the franchise, okay, you were lucky, but you didn't play quarterback. Lucky. You were lucky. lucky. I lucky. Okay, because there was some point somewhere we in were. John Elway's career where they struggled. Yeah, we that did. They, okay, there'd be a three-game losing streak. I don't know if you ever had a three-game. Oh, uh, yeah, we had a six-game losing streak. You had a six-game losing mm -hmm. streak, okay. At some point, <laughs> the quarterback has to send a message to the locker room, hey, what he's saying is, we could be great because we've shown we could be great. Last year, we beat the Philadelphia Eagles twice. We turned our season around winning at Philadelphia, and they came to our place, and we shellacked them in the fourth quarter in overtime. John, we, John couldn't even tell that lie. Okay. We, we, he couldn't even tell that lie and say we were great. Okay. He's like, we just need to play better. And Dad can't even tell that lie, Skip. They, okay. they, he can't even tell a lie and tell about they're they great. At what, at what, what areas are they great in? Okay, you have to reach back to what you have been. You've shown flashes because, you show as flashes I keep telling you, football. I haven't even seen a sign of life from this team for three straight games. So the leader has to say, I still see greatness because I've seen greatness in this team. That's why I picked him to Where go is to the it? Super Bowl. What kind of glass he got? Because really? I need him. Okay. Well, what kind of lenses? Maybe you fear what he I, said. I don't fear nothing. Yeah. Because yeah. they got a good team. They play some good. First of all, they played good against some bad football teams. Okay. But when they stepped up in caliber, what didn't happen? Well, we'll find out on Sunday night. Indeed, we? we will. So it we should be a fabulous showdown. No mercy. Breaking news out of New Orleans. 
According to reports, Zion Williamson will now miss a period of several weeks to start the regular season. It's a right knee injury, but it's not expected to be severe. Zion was averaging over 23 points per game this preseason. Shannon, what's your reaction? Mm. I can't say I'm surprised. Skip, I think he's going to have to lose 10 to 15 percent of his body weight. He's just too heavy. Skip, he has the injury risk of a center. And what do we see with center, Skip? Knee and ankle problems. The only center feet. that... Feet. Feet, feet problems, yeah. The only, the only feet. true center, Skip, that we've never seen have a problem is who? Kareem. Why? Super skinny. But all the rest of them had knee, true. ankle, feet problems. Yeah. 285 is too much, Skip. Mm. We've never seen anything like this. No. That's a lot of torque. That's a lot of force. And if he it misses any amount of time, what happens, Skip, mm. when you can't play basketball your sport? What do you have a <laughs> propensity to do? Get even heavier. Yep. Because you can't train. You can't mm -hmm. run. You can't do those other things. True. Skip, I'm sorry. He's going to have to take it off. He's going to have to take 10 to 15%. Whatever he is, they list him at 284. I believe he's a little heavier. Mm. 10 to 15% is going to have to come off this man. Mm. You have been right about this all along, and I have agreed with you. If the injuries start to pile up, I'm out, man. But I hate this because first it was Patrick Mahomes last night, and now it's Zion Williamson today. It's bad for business. It's yes. bad for the NFL. It's bad for the NBA because I love this kid. Yes. First rookie in 20 years to average 20-plus points through the preseason, at least through this point right. in the preseason, shooting 71%. He can finish, but he finishes from way up there, and he comes way down here. And the only good news here, this is not said to be severe at all. Right. And the only good news was, in watching all the games, there wasn't one play where he went crashing to the floor and grabbed his knee, writhing right. in pain. So it wasn't hurt on one single right. play. So we saw the sneaker blowout at Duke that cost him a knee sprain and some time, right? And then we saw early in his first summer league action, he had a knee bruise. I think he banged, banged knees, knees, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the other knee. Now, this is the right knee, and I don't know what the extent of this is, but it's certainly not good news, and I wish him well, but it's going to take a little bit of the heart out of the start of the season because he's not going to be around for a while. And about the blessing in the sky, yeah. there's not one thing, but what we're seeing, Skip, is an accumulation. Yep. And when you're that big and you're the repetitive up and down on a nightly basis, Ooh. think about it now. He's going to miss Ooh. some time, but to do 70 plus 80 Ooh. games, Pelicans that's a lot. Pelicans are being cautious. That's Ooh. it for us. We got to go. We're back at 9.30 Eastern Monday. No mercy. Thank you for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Keep an eye out for the weekend edition of the podcast tomorrow morning featuring this week's best segments. Have a great weekend, everyone. Fox Sports. One of one. Of one. Of one. Of one.